Game On. Presented by Spectrum Sports. And a very pleasant good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa, where the fans are beginning to file into the arena, where a near capacity crowd of over 10,000 expected for the Big West Conference men's championship match between the number one seed Long Beach State and the second seeded Rainbow Warriors. And this is Game On, presented by Spectrum Sports for Rainbow Warrior Volleyball. Jim Donovan and I met with Dennis Farrell in 2010 to discuss Big West men's volleyball. And, uh, you know, fast forward eight years to 2018, it's become a reality. And, uh, and for us to be able to host uh, an event like this, you know, we've had some great crowds for the last few weeks of our season uh, and really expecting a, a, a really special environment for, you know, not just our team, but for, you know, volleyball fans throughout the country. Charlie Wade talking about how this came about. It took eight years, but finally the Big West Conference now in year two as a volleyball conference as well. Hi, everybody. Scott Robbs, Lisa Stranma, and thank goodness we're glad to have back the coach himself, Chris McLaughlin. Guys, it's interesting. This is a rematch of a rematch of the first meeting three years ago for the MPSF Tournament Championship. Last year in Long Beach, these two teams met for the Tournament Championship of the Big West. Here again, the third time around, it's Hawaii and Long Beach State. Let's take a look how we got here. It all began on Thursday, UCI in three over UCSD. Santa Barbara down CSUN in thrilling fashion in five. Then last night, the top two seats got onto the floor as Long Beach State going forward with UCSB and Hawaii really just taking apart the UC Irvine Anteaters in three. And so it has gone chalk the way it was drawn up from, as you see, number one, Long Beach State taking on number two, Hawaii. And guys, this is the one that I think everybody, not just the fans in Hawaii, but the volleyball community wanted to see. And it is what we're getting, Hawaii, Long Beach State again. Absolutely. I mean, this is exactly what they wanted and what we almost expected, if you will, not to take anything away from the other participating Big West teams. But these two just seem to match up great. Not only wanting to play here in Hawaii, but in the Stan Sheriff, build it and they will come. And believe me, they are piling in tonight. I was lucky enough to be in Long Beach last week, got to see these two Titans battle each other. And it was, it was something to behold. Uh, it was world-class volleyball. I felt like I was watching a professional league in Europe because the, the level of volleyball was so high, so much fun to watch. These fans are going to be treated to literally a preview of the NC2A finals. Yeah, that's what we were hoping for at least. Now, this will be the final ticket punch for that automatic berth into the NCAAs. Here you see those that will be going to the Long Beach in a couple of weeks. Barton on Thursday, they won Conference Carolina. Earlier today, Princeton beat Penn State in five, their first time to the NCAA since back in 1998. Lewis in three over Loyola Chicago and Pepperdine down USC at the Fieldhouse in three. And of course, coming up Hawaii and Long Beach State. So those teams are all in. Barton, Princeton, Lewis, Pepperdine, and one of these two will get the automatic berth. So we assume that both these teams will be in regardless of the result tonight, right? Well, definitely. I mean, you, you have to safely assume they've been number one and number two in the country now for almost all year, besides the preseason polls. Long Beach State being the defending national champion, definitely, and they're hosting, so that's kind of a no-brainer. And Hawaii, well, they've been number two, and with tonight's matchup, we will see who gets the automatic bid. So, Coach, really what it comes down to, what we think are three teams vying for that final at large, UC Santa Barbara, UC Irvine, USC. These were the records heading into the week. You can give a win and a loss to both those records uh, for all three of those teams. So the question is, who of the three gets in? I think it's going to be you know, really tough because all three teams can make a case for being that second at-large team. And I had a chance to actually write a paper, help write a paper to, to a committee about maybe eight years ago when I was working at Stanford. And it, you got to address all like nine criteria that they give you. And it takes a long time to go through your records and all this other stuff. And it's very complicated. And so each of those coaches had submitted what they think is their best case for their team. And that's going on right now, actually. I'm sure those the committee members have received letters from SC and, uh, and uh, who was the other one? Oh, Santa, Santa Barbara. Barbara. 
and, and, Irvine. and Irvine, you know, and so I, you know, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even start to think which one of those three should have it because I don't have those papers in front of me. Otherwise, I'd take a great guess, but if I had to guess though right now, I think I'd guess SC. Yeah, I kind of leaned that way as well, but we all thought Hawaii was in last year, and we all know what happened there. Of course, don't forget NCAA Selection Show tomorrow morning online, 7 a.m. Hawaii time. Go to NCAA.com, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, NCAA.com. Well, I know a couple of guys will be up early tomorrow probably checking that out. The duel, they'll be calling the action. It's Kanoa and Ryan, guys. Thanks a lot, Scott. Yeah, next to Ryan Kalei Suji, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And uh, Ryan, let's talk about this match, the Big West Conference Tournament Championship on the line. You have number one versus number two in the rankings, number one versus number two in the seedings. This is round three. Do you think the number one seed in the NCAA tournament may be riding on this one? You know, it's hard to say because even if Hawaii comes away with a victory here tonight and they get that automatic bid, uh, they're still 2-1 and one when you're going at it with Long Beach State in the overall record. So it's really uh, hard to decide what's going to happen. And especially, you can't really bet anything with the NCAA because who knows what they use sometimes to make these judgments and these decisions. Well, what makes this matchup so compelling and why I think everyone in the volleyball race realm wanted to see this championship match is you have two teams that played to five twice in Long Beach last week on the first night the fifth set final score was 15 13 I mean it was that close it was that competitive in both nights Hawaii led two sets to one so you move the stage now to the Stan Sheriff Center it is looking like it'll be a packed house here tonight in Honolulu what will be the factors here this evening, you think? Well, you know, I think that you have to look down the stat sheet and you have to look at maybe the X factors. You know, some of the players that maybe didn't have a great outing that first time around or didn't put up the numbers that maybe we normally would see. I think one of those players is Colton Cowell. If he has the type of night that he had last night, that will really help Hawaii's cause. Dalton Soberg, I think, is going to have to have another big night. We know the go-to players, Von Tilburg, and Parapunov, Gassman, those players will get their sits. I think it's going to come down to some of those X factors, those other players, and how they are able to contribute and add points to the scoreboard for Hawaii. You know, on the other side, for Long Beach State, what was exemplified last week was they had another gear that they could sort of take it to, right? And for Hawaii, that was somewhat foreign waters. They had won 74 straight sets until they lost a set to UC Santa Barbara in this building prior to that Long Beach trip. And then they go five twice against the 49ers. Do you think or do we even know yet if Hawaii has that next level gear. Well, I think those two losses and going five both times at Long Beach has actually helped Hawaii to establish what that gear looks like. Uh, you know, again, as you mentioned, Hawaii had never been challenged and never been put in that position. So actually now I think that they kind of realized what they need to do. Uh, and at times up there, you know, we were both up there. We saw a different Hawaii team in those some of those games where they struggled. The serving wasn't as strong. Uh, they were looking a little hesitant at times. Uh, I think that loss actually helped them and we're going to see new developments in their offense and their blocking schemes this time around. I mean, we have seen some great trilogies over the years, right? Ali, Frazier, you go down the list here in the world of sports. But this year in college volleyball, this third installment, man, it has the makings of it. being something classic here at the Stan Sheriff Center. All right, we'll see you at first serve. Let's send it back over to the corner crew. All right, thanks a lot, guys. When we come back, we'll look back to last week's matches at the Pyramid. But a reminder, get the greatest plays, hardest hits, and schedule info by following Spec Sports High on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You're watching Championship Game On. The game comes down to the ability to execute um, and not be caught up in what was going wrong or could go wrong or anything in the last play. So, you know, we have a motto that everything's going to be all right if we win the next point. So let's just focus on winning the next point, stack one after that. And it seems very simplistic, but uh, let's be us and let's stack points. Well, that's philosophy of Alan Knight, head coach of Long Beach State. His 49ers defending Big West and national champions taking on the second seed, University of Hawaii. Now, of course, it was just one week ago that these two teams played at the Pyramid in Long Beach. Hawaii had chances in both days. They were up 2-1 to one both Friday and Saturday nights, but could not put away the beach as the 49ers won the fourth and fifth set. So we got a chance to talk to both coaches about last week. We did a decent job of kind of getting getting them out of system and had opportunities to score. Um, 
and we just didn't. Uh, you know, we had been really effective blocking uh, throughout the whole season and, uh, and, and did not block very well. And didn't, like I said, win opportunities to, to end rallies defensively, we did not. I think we grew a lot. You know, we grew from the experience, we grew from the battle, and we also got deeper because we got more guys on the floor getting used to play that kind of volleyball, and that makes us better for the, the, the late season push. Well, let's look at the numbers from a week ago. The one that really matters is at the very top, but everything seems to be relatively even except for the blocking. Long Beach State's blocking was outstanding, and, and as you heard Charlie say all week, their blocking really struggled a week ago against LBS. Well, and that's what they talked about is that all week long they worked on their blocking. They tried to put together a three-man block and really stayed focused on this week off, knowing that they potentially could match up again with Long Beach State here tonight. You know, that was the thing that stood out to me last week was the blocking difference. Hawaii was the number one blocking team in the country going into that match. And uh, you got to give a lot of credit, I think, to Gus Tuaninga for Long Beach State. He's the one who really was very deceptive, made it hard for the Hawaii blockers to read where the set was going to go. And that's why uh, I think, you know, Hawaii struggled from the blocking angle. And to put in the three-man block this week, I think it's, it's going to be okay. But... Oh, man, you still got to read what Gus is going to do, and that's not going to be easy. He's really a good center. Well, you were a successful coach for more than a few years. Chris, what would you do tonight differently than what you saw Hawaii do a week ago? Well, I, I think the, uh, the, the notion of, of running a three-man block, I think it's a good idea, and I think it might be helpful. It certainly was helpful last night against Irvine. I think the other thing would be to have Joe Worsley really study his set selection because last night, it was a, uh, last weekend, I thought it was a little suspect. Uh, I got a little pin heavy and got away from the middles a little bit. And I, I think uh, normally we've been used to him spreading it all around to everybody. He's so good at that. And that's one of the reasons why Hawaii's hit, hits for such a high percentage, over 440 for the year. An unbelievable number, shattering the NC2A record. And so I think that I'm going to really be watching what his set selection is going to be like tonight. That's a huge difference maker. Do you think both teams learned a little something about themselves, Lisa, in those two matches? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Long Beach State, Alan Knipe said that he, his team grew a lot deeper. He had to use some players that he hadn't used prior to the match, and it just allowed his team to grow as a whole. And as far as Hawaii, I think they've learned a lot. They have went back, they've studied film. I talked to Joe Worsley, and he said, I'm watching. I know what I did. We've got to get better. I know what I've got to work on. I mean, he has studied it left and right, and he knows exactly, Chris, what you're talking about. He's coming to this match very intense. He's looked at this all year long, not only for tonight, but he's really studied this team. We always talk about intangibles, not just in volleyball, but in sports. How much of a psychological advantage does Long Beach State have over Hawaii, having won both those matches last week and the way they won it, being down 2-1 both nights and coming back and winning in five? I think psychologically, I don't think Hawaii, you know, is going to struggle with that very much because they've played so well all year long. So there's a blip on the screen, a bump in the road. I don't think that's going to bother this kind of a team, especially when you look back at the total score for the weekend, 203 to 203. Right. I think they're dead even in points scored. So how can you beat yourself up or, or go wacko just because, you know, you you, uh, you lost a couple matches? I think that I think Hawaii will grow more out of this weekend, that last weekend, and uh, maybe even grow more than Long Beach State. I think we're going to look for, and even if it's possible to get a tighter match tonight, I think we'll see that. We're excited. I'm sure all of you are as well. We'll take a break. We'll come back, and we'll start looking at the matchup. Hawaii, Long Beach State. Part three. This is a, a great environment. Um, one, they get a huge crowd. Um, secondly, it's a, it's a super knowledgeable, knowledgeable fan base of the game. Um, they appreciate great volleyball, and so uh, it's it's, an, it's a really good environment for the guys. You know, there's, it's very rare that when you're thinking and dreaming of being a, 
a collegiate athlete. You think of playing in a, a gym with a few hundred people in it, you know? You, you think of big matches with big things at stake and hopefully big energetic crowds and you know we're, we're excited to be here for that and I know uh, I know our guys are excited to get out there. Well this place will be rocking tonight and they're playing for that the Big West Conference Men's Volleyball Tournament Trophy and the automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament. All right let's turn our attention now to the match. Let's take a look at the leaders for the University of Hawaii. Well, again, Rado Parapunov, I mean, out way out on top, kill percentage as well as Stein von Tilburg. And the go-to guy, this setter, Joe Worsley, distributing the balls out tonight. These have been the go-to players for Hawaii all year long. And for the 49ers of Long Beach State, each one of these players at one time was a conference player of the year. And they, and they play like it. In fact, Ensing, I thought last night, played like he had to defend anybody who was a naysayer about him getting the player of the year. He was going to go out and show it, but he deserved it. Ensing, a great opposite. He's like the, the Rana Parapunov of their team. P.J. DeFalco is the SBT of their team, and Josh Reninga, obviously, the Worsley of their team. Great matchups. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. In fact, let's take a look at the season comparisons and look at the numbers. Why with the advantage overall on the numbers serving, though? That will be a big factor tonight as well. Long Beach State served away pretty tough last weekend, though 427 service here. So I was hoping they add to that number. Rev up those engines. Time now for your peak performer. Brought to you by Bank of Hawaii. All righty, Lisa and Chris. I don't really care what team you pick or what player, but who do you think is going to be the person that steps up tonight to help his team win it all? Well, I kind of looked at this from both angles. I looked at it from Long Beach State, and I, I chose Jordan Molina, a very strange pick, if you will. But without their libero, they don't get that pass, and they don't get to set those hitters that are pretty spectacular. And I'll tell you what, this young man goes kind of under the radar. You don't really see what he does, but his passing hit uh, last night and all season long has been pretty spot on. Uh, for Hawaii, I actually looked at their side of the net. I thought long and hard about it, and I really felt strongly that Stein von Tilburg needs to have a good match. I think the others are going to have good matches, but his senior leadership has really been um, efficient all year long, and the team looks at him at a different level as well. Good choices, Lisa. I like them. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go with some other choices. I, I really like the setters for each team. I think the setters for each team are going to dictate how this match goes, the choices they make, how much they fake out the other team's block, how much they throw off the other team's defense, how much they score in transition. I think that's going to make the difference. So Joe Worsley and Josh Meninga are my two peak performers. And these two teams, they, they know each other so well. They're, I, I can't imagine there's going to be any secrets on either side. It's really going to be who's more efficient probably throughout the night, right? Oh, definitely. I mean. This is a battle. The battle is officially on very shortly here. And these two teams know each other very well through the years. And just the, the competition, what do you call that? A rivalry that has, has happened with both of these teams. And it continues with Long Beach State and Hawaii. You think Gage is loose? Oh, Some Gage in the background over there? <laughs> We're going to do something about Gage. Who's in charge of Gage? <laughs> Nobody, unfortunately. <laughs> what, what do you think, though? What is it going to come down to tonight? You know, I, I think it's going to come down. I think Hawaii's got to improve their block number one their blocking was not good last weekend and I think the play of Colton Cowell on the outside is going to be key last weekend uh, uh, Ethan Siegfried came in for Long Beach and was phenomenal I think Cowell's got to come out and make that same sort of statement here in the Stan Sheriff Center tonight last week these two met to end the regular season but tonight a trophy's on the line and NCAA birth is on the line as well the first seed Long Beach State the second seed the University of Hawaii when we come back the National Anthem and Hawaii Ponui as we count down the first serve. You're watching Spectrum Sports. Happy Aloha Saturday and welcome to another exciting volleyball here at the Stan Sheriff Center. It's game time for the 2019 Big West Championship. Fans, it's time to make some noise. 
Singing tonight is a Na Hoku Hano Hano Award winner. And this year marks 10 years since her debut album. She has been dropping hit songs ever since. She has had multiple singles become nationwide successes, such as Higher Than The Clouds and Simple Love Songs. This year, she's also been award nominee for the Nahoku Hano Hano Award winner in Best Island Music Award. Volleyball fans, stand to your center. Please welcome Anuhia. <laughs> By the dawn's early light Was so proudly we hail At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star Spangled banner, yeah, wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> And there you see part of this large crowd on hand here at the Stan Sheriff Center to take in the championship match of the Big West Conference Tournament. Third straight year, these two teams will battle for a crown. If you remember, two years ago, it was for the MPSF Championship. Long Beach State won that one. A year ago, in Long Beach, Hawaii, and the 49ers, and the 49ers won it. And the third time, be a charm for the University of Hawaii. That's what they're hoping happens here in front of this near capacity crowd. These two teams so evenly matched, having met each other just a week ago. Hawaii falling in five, both Friday and Saturday nights. And so the stage has been set. Hawaii, Long Beach State, the top two teams all season long meeting here tonight for the Big West Championship and everybody hoping in a couple of weeks for a national championship. Let's meet the teams. The Big West Conference welcomes you to Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii at Manoa for the 2019 Big West Men's Volleyball Tournament. Tonight's final match for the tournament championship features the number two seed Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Versus the number one seed, Long Beach State Beach. <laughs> Introducing the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors starting lineup. 
And outside hitter, 6'8", senior from Amsterdam, Netherlands. Number four, Stein von Tilburg. At Libero, 6'1", sophomore from Moraga, California. Number six, Gage Worsley. At middle blocker, 6'6", six, six, senior from Lindenhurst, Illinois. Number 11, Dalton Sobre. Middle blocker, 6'10", junior from Clovis, California. Number 15, Patrick Gassman. <laughs> and outside hitter, 6'2", junior from Makawao, Maui. Number 17, Colton Cowell. Six nine junior from Sofia, Bulgaria. Number nineteen, Rado Parapuno. And at center, six one senior from Moraga, California. Floor captain, number one, Joe Worsley. The Hawaii staff student assistant, Matt Larson. Volunteer assistant Chad Giesman, assistant coach Joshua Walker, associate coach Milan Zarkovich, head coach for the Rainbow Warriors, Charlie Wade. <laughs> now introducing the Long Beach State Beach starting lineup. At opposite, six, seven, senior from Valencia, California. Number five, Kyle Lensing. At Lee Barrow, 5'9", senior from Carson, California. Number nine, Jordan Molina. <laughs> At center, 6'3", senior from Long Beach, California. Number 10, Josh Tuaninga. Side hitter, 6'4", senior from Huntington Beach, California. Floor captain, number 11, T.J. DeFalco. <laughs> and middle blocker, 6'8", sophomore from Middle Park, Denmark. Number 13, Simone Anderson. And outside hitter, 6'1", sophomore from Honolulu. Number 19, Ethan Siegfried. And that middle blocker, 6'6", seen from Aliso Niguel, California. Number 25, Nick Amato. Volunteer assistant is McKay Smith. Assistant coach Scott Tuzinski. Associate head coach Nick McRae. Head coach for the beach, Alan Knight. is two for the conference crown as the Rainbow Warriors look to avenge their only two losses of the season against Long Beach State. On the other side of the net, the Beach reigning Big West and national champs looking to defend the league title and return home with the coveted hardware. Coming up, a Big West battle of the Titans, Hawaii and Long Beach State round three. A packed house 
here at the Stan Sheriff Center, a glorious statement on behalf of collegiate men's volleyball. Kanoa Leahy next to Ryan Kalei Suji. Let's take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Well, first for the University of Hawaii, we're going to take the playbook out of Coach Rolo's qu uh, quote, defend pride rock. Hawaii running on a 16-0 and home court winning streak. They want to defend this home court advantage and use it to their advantage. And for Long Beach State 49ers, they need to put in the earplugs. Just moments ago, when these two teams took the floor, it was electric in here. Chicken skin moment as this crowd will be rocking. Long Beach State has got to find a way to quiet this crowd and not let that dictate the way they play. If you're Hawaii, you played in front of a sellout crowd here previously on senior night. Do you have to warn yourself against maybe getting a little too jazzed up? Yeah, I think for both teams, it's really to control the adrenaline and really just rely on your skills. Joe Worsley will get us started. The Big West Conference Tournament Championship. Kyle Ensing with the first swing, and he gets the first point. Kyle Ensing has been on an absolute tear last night against UCSB in the semifinals. 18 kills, just one error. He hit 515. Yeah, even out of system that time there, they have to go with a high ball to Insing. Got three blockers up. Insing went high hands to pick up his first kill of the night. So here's Ethan Siegfried out of Punahou School right here in Honolulu, Hawaii. And he goes along with it. Do you think he ever imagined playing in front of a crowd like this in this building? I don't think so. And remember, Siegfried is a player that wasn't necessarily a starter to begin the season. He's been coming off the bench. He had a great weekend last weekend against Hawaii back at home. So he's got the starting line. We'll see how he handles the pressure here tonight. And another out serve, this time by Stein von Tilburg. And we're trading blows here at the onset. Hawaii coming in 26-2 and two on the year. Those two losses... Coming at the hands of the team across the net, Long Beach State at Walter Pyramid last week. The Beach 26 and 1, claiming the top seed in the Big West Conference by going 10 and 0 in the regular season. Worsley outside. Here's Colton Cowell going over the top of the block. And that was a very important side off for our wife for a number of reasons. Nick Amato went on a scoring run both nights at Long Beach State last week in Hawaii, quickly getting out of that rotation and easily getting Colton Kawa his first kill. That's what Hawaii needs. Kawa needs to get hot from the get-go. Well, Hawaii did not thrive from behind the service line at Long Beach. Good serve there by Pat Gassman. The middle set, Simone Anderson could not put it down, so Hawaii with the chance. Stein sets up Rado Potapunov. Save along the back line by Siegfried. Here's Ensing again. Three blockers up, and he's roofed. Again, this is an area Hawaii worked extremely hard on during this week was the triple block that time in out of system play. Insane hit the first ball, the first kill he got high hands, this time going into the meat of the block. Rana Parapunov doing a nice shot, closing the cross court. So three serving two, and this crowd is amped. Fully loaded. Gasman catches the tape, diving pass by Jordan Molina. Anderson couldn't get it down. So Worsley, high ball to Cole. Colton Powell continuing his hot streak. That ball hit outside the line, just going straight over and down. Colton Powell, nine kills at 4-12 with four blocks against UC Irvine last night. Was somewhat quiet in terms of his hitting percentage last week at Long Beach. If he gets it going, that is obviously a huge factor for the Rainbow Warriors. Here's Cowell again, and he gets it down again. We'll play the drums down in Lahaina, Colton Cowell making Maui proud, picking up his third kill. More importantly, Rado Parapuna getting a great touch on the block against TJ DeFalco. Parapuna's blocking was a little suspect last week, that time sticking to his assignments and getting a nice touch on the, uh, on the attack by TJ DeFalco. Three kills, three swings for Colton Cowell. Five serving two. Pass by TJ DeFalco. He gets the set on the outside and smacks it down. TJ DeFalco, the 6'4 senior from Huntington Beach, California. One of about a handful of players out of Huntington Beach High School along with his setter, Josh Tuaninga, the National Player of the Year a couple of seasons ago and quite simply one of the best volleyballers in all the land. Here is his former high school mate, Josh Tuaninga, the setter. 
Rado is blocked and roofed, and that's a statement right there. Simone Anderson right next to DeFalco, and they were able to catch Potapunov several times back at Walter Pyramid last week. Yeah, that time there, Anderson did a nice shot closing, averaging 0.74 blocks per set. Nice footwork and close for the middle blocker. So here's Tuaninga, last year's national ABCA player of the year, and he goes long. A Long Beach State team that certainly was the standard of excellence last year. And as you take a look at Alan Knight in his 16th season on the bench here for the beach. To Aninga, middle. That's Anderson. It's pinballed around. But then Solberg and Potapunov staring at each other as it bounces off the Terraflex. A great touch on the block there in Hawaii. An opportunity to run transition to give that free ball over. But again, that's where I think a little bit of the nerves and a little bit of the communication. Once these two, two teams settle down, those types of plays won't happen as often. Here's DeFalco. The program's all-time leader in aces coming in with 175 for his career. But he sends that one out. And three service errors already for Long Beach State. They're going after it from the service line. We'll see, though, how often and if they sort of let back if they continue to have these serving issues. And here is Colton Kyle. 6'1 junior out of Makawao. Pass by DeFalco, a perfect one. He gets the set on the pipe. Is blocked, but it's returned. Good scramble there by the beach. Worsley couldn't get it down. Little pitter-patter back and forth. Hawaii now with it. Rado. And Hawaii's blocking looking very crisp tonight. They have scouted this team well. Dalton Selberg thought he had a block on that first play, but great coverage by Long Beach State. And Rado Parapun up with the exclamation mark. Another kill for Rado. Eight serving five here in set number one. Falco again puts it on the money. Here's Siegfried and the local boy coming back home. Continuing to thrive here against Hawaii. Went career in the second of the two matches at Long Beach last week. 16 kills, a career high, hitting 556. Oh, and he also had a double-double with 10 digs. Yeah, really was the X factor in Long Beach during, during, last, during that last matchup. He will be one of those critical factors also tonight. Call with the pass. Here's Potapunov off the block and out. And Rado looks healthy. He looks strong and confident right now. That time, tooling the block, picking up his second kill. You see the numbers in the two matches versus Long Beach State. He did put up a season high on night one, 21 kills. But certainly not at the hitting percentage that he has posted throughout the year. He's hitting 450 on the season. To winning a backside, Ensing. How do you account for Kyle Ensing, 6'7", senior from Valencia, California, the Big West Conference Player of the Year when you got to worry about DeFalco, wherever he's at off the floor? And that's where, if Long Beach is in system, they're very tough to beat because they have so many attackers and so many weapons and a great setter that can really distribute this ball and keep the defense guessing. Pass by Cowell, a good one. Gasman couldn't get a good contact, but the overpass is dug up by DeFalco. Ensign comes swooping in, diving save along the end line by Cowell. High ball to Stein. Great defense by Hawaii, staying patient throughout that rally, and a great vision by Stein von Tilburg. Diving dig by Cowell to keep that play alive. They set a little tight for Stein, and so he just does, does the deep tip into area number five. Here's Joe Worsley. A 67 mile an hour delivery. Siegfried is blocked and rolled. Again, Hawaii's block looking very strong right now. The nation leader in block showing why right here, Parapuna closing that line. And that was something that they did not do as effectively at Long Beach. In fact, it was the beach that put forth two of their best blocking matches of the season as Worsley pumps that one long. 
On night two, Long Beach State outblocked Hawaii 15 and a half to six and a half in the total team blocks category. We'll see how it plays out here in this one. Round three of who knows what could be a four part series here in 2019. Worsley backside, Von Tilburg through the hands and he gets the point back for the Warriors. And even against a double block, Long Beach State recognizing that in rotation one, Hawaii likes to go back set to Stein Von Tilburg in that position that he played for two seasons. That time they're tooling TJ DeFalco. Von Tilburg, 6'8", senior from Amsterdam, one of five Hawaii players to make the Big West Conference's first team. Forces the overpass. Cowell! And Colton Cowell has got it going on tonight. Another kill, forcing Long Beach State into a timeout. Timeout, Long Beach State. The Haleakala Hammer brought his toolkit. Welcome back, let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken. 2-0-1, the total points scored for both Hawaii and Long Beach State in their two matches last week in the Walter Pyramid. Yes, each team scored exactly the same amount of points over the course of the two matches. That's how close this matchup is, at least so far here in 2019. TJ DeFalco rips it off the block. The coverage there by Cowell, backside, Potapunov. Well, they got it going on right now, Ryan. Nice sharp cross-court kill by Rado Parapunov that time going inside the middle blocker hand. Amato's attempted right-hand block. A 3-0 run here for Hawaii. You see, last night, Rado was on a roll, error-free, 12 kills at 8.57, just psycho. Gage Worsley, speaking of psycho, with the save, Stein from the back row. to 15 first. Timeout on the floor. The stand is rocking. Rainbow Warrior Volleyball on Spectrum Sports is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Welcome back. Quite a scene here at the Stan Sheriff Center and quite a start for the Rainbow Warriors up 15-8 here in set number one, Big West Conference Tournament Championship. To Aninga, outside, to Falco. The layout save there by Von Tilber. Potapuno from behind the line, hits it into the twine. Great one-handed save that time in the backcourt by Stein Von Tilburg. And TJ Del Falco right now with only one kill. Look for him to get more sets as we move into the latter parts of this first set. And had a bit of a slower start against UC Santa Barbara in the semi last night as well. Would finish with 11 kills, hit 217 for the match. And just with his reputation, you know, that just means he's due. Here's Carlos Rivera in and back to serve for the beach. Gasman in the middle, can't get it down. To Aninga with choices, goes to Simone Anderson. And Long Beach State puts together a couple of consecutive points. We'll take a look at Charlie Wade in his 10th year, 5 and 12 all time as a head coach here at Hawaii in his matchups with Allen Knight. See the numbers for Anderson. 6'8 sophomore from Middlefart, Denver, uh, Denmark. Ten serving 15. And give the crowd credit for that, sir. This crowd is electric. I mean, they are fired up. Coming in here, there were lines everywhere. Lines at the concession, lines to get, I mean, the lines here were longer than the lines at Costco on a three-day weekend. I mean, there was a lot of people <laughs> in this building waiting to get in. Well, that was one of the goals for Charlie Wade when he took on this job a decade ago. He said, hey, look, we want to be a national contender perennially. That is one of our objectives. The other, we want to fill this stand chair of center. And he has achieved that here in this 2019 season. Good serve there by Jakob Tella. Ensing still able to go over the top of a triple block 
and get the kill. He is something else. And he now has three kills on six wings. Yeah, out of system play. Look at the contact that he's making over Hawaii's triple block. I and mean, it really is a pick your poison type of situation when you think about trying to defend this Long Beach State squad. 11 serving 16 to Aninga sends it across. Dalton Solbrig, the quick hitter. And a great first pass by Gage Worsley, allowing Joel Worsley to have options and run that attack. First kill for Dalton Solberg. A couple of big time liberos battling here on the floor as well. Gage Worsley on one side, Jordan Molina on the other. Had to dive just to keep that one alive, and then he two hands it across. Advantage here for Hawaii. Worsley back road of Von Tilburg off the fingertips of the block. To Weninga, backside, and that's TJ DeFalco ripping it down for his second kill. TJ DeFalco going one on one against Colton Cowell that time and cutting that ball back down the line. DeFalco picking up his second kill, hitting 333. And the three time first team All American now back behind the service line where he can string them together. Not that time, however. And Hawaii back up a half dozen. <laughs> Alan Knight now the two time Big West Conference Coach of the Year. He has had a tremendous career. Part of two national championships at Long Beach State as Anderson gets it down. Knipe coached one last year and actually played on the previous national championship team back in 1991. Yeah, a great coach, well seasoned, a lot of experience. His 16th season, he also was a former national team coach, coached the team in the Olympics. Here's Grant Buenasso, the younger brother of former Rainbow Wahine volleyball player Gianna Buenasso, and he serves it out. Six service errors so far for Long Beach State. A little bit, little bit of a wrinkle here in the festivities. Hawaii is essentially the visiting team, and so that's why they're actually sitting on the opposite bench than what they would normally start the match. And also came out of a different tunnel across the arena from where their locker room actually is. And that's Nick Amato, another part of this senior class. Six seniors who were honored last week in the final match of the regular season at Walter Pyramid. One of the best senior classes, not just in Long Beach State history, but I mean, they have been historically good throughout their stay in Southern California. Worsley surveys the floor, goes outside to Von Tilburg. And he records kill number four. Stein swinging it pretty stoutly here at the early onset of this match. And Hawaii looking to be in a very good rhythm right now, offensively and passing. They are doing a nice job of siding out at a high clip and putting pressure from behind the service line as well. 20 serving 14 to winning the backside and seeing his block. Tilburg chasing that ball out to the antenna, barely making it, but able to just throw his hands up, steal that antenna, and gets the block. And the crowd rages on here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Take another look at this. He's just barely able to get out there. Glory. Yeah, and you can see there, that's the, the difficulty with defending a team like Long Beach. You have to stay committed in the middle. That time, Von Tilburg able to chase and get his hand on that attack. So we take a look at the updated numbers here. Long Beach State hitting 333 in this opening frame. Hawaii hitting 500. You talk about the service line. That's just such a key for the Warriors. It sounds like it's simplistic. Obviously, in any volleyball match, serve and pass is a pretty important couple of factors. But uh, you talk about for this Hawaii team in particular, that seems to really get them going. 
Yeah, and they just are comfortable serving here at home. They don't have an ace yet tonight, but the one thing that they are doing is they're putting Long Beach in a lot of auto system plays. And again, remind you, Long Beach is a team that has a four-man passing pattern. A lot of teams that Hawaii will play against run a three-man, not Long Beach. They have all of their passers in there. So it's very difficult to put them off as we look at one of the highlights for Hawaii is they're blocking here tonight. Three and a half blocks so far. And this is an area that Hawaii struggled with at Long Beach. But they were doing a nice job of staying disciplined and reading this Long Beach State attack. Three and a half total blocks to one in favor of Hawaii here in this first set. Third straight year that UH and Long Beach State have met up in a conference championship. Outside that Siegfried block, but the save by DeFalco, and Ensign just has to touch it over. Worsley outside to Stein, and a net violation goes against the beach. And so Hawaii gets the point. And Long Beach State just does not look in system. I mean, even in that transition play, a, a broken play, a bad set by Tuaninga. And Stein von Tilburg getting the kill off the net violation. Five kills for Stein. On six swings, mind you. Here's Siegfried, pumps it long. And that's now four straight points here for the Warriors. And Siegfried struggling a little here. We'll see how much longer Coach Knight decides to stay with Siegfried or make the call and the switch to a second outside hitter. Where does he decide to take something off? The Falco had to slide in to make the pass. How about the save by Worsley? Powell is dug up by the Falco. Siegfried is blocked, but it goes out of bounds. I mean, you had two straight up unimpeded digs on either side. Gage Worsley for Hawaii and TJ DeFalco on the side of the beach. We are being treated to some high level volleyball here. The velocity of these hits and the defensive plays is just simply amazing. What a tall hill to climb here for Long Beach. 15 serving 23. Pass by Cowell. Worsley, quick middle to Gassman. He's blocked. Stays on the Hawaii side. Backside, Stein tried to roll it down. Diving save, Molina, well done. Insane return to sender. And that time there, Rado Parapuna actually on the left side going against the player of the year, Ensing. The two players who a lot of people thought would be battling for player of the year. That time, Rado getting the upper hand with the block. And it is Aloha Ball here in set one. And look at this. It hasn't normally been done before, but the crowd is standing for set point as opposed to just match point. And DeFalco hits it into the net, and Hawaii wins set one convincingly. Twenty-five, fifteen. Rainbow Warriors strike first in the Big West Conference Championship Showdown. The Spectrum Store at Ward is relocated to Ala Moana with new expanded hours. Located at street level near Shirakia, now open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 9, and Sundays, 10 to 7. Check it out. Well, Colton Cowell got Hawaii off to a fast start. He kind of set the tone for the Warriors in that first frame. Yeah, and at, before the broadcast, he said that Colton Cowell was going to be sort of the X factor. He didn't necessarily have a great outing the last time these two teams played, but he's doing it all not only from the offensive side, but really doing a nice job stabilizing the passing. And Stein Von Tilburg continues with his All-American ways. Stein Von Tilburg, five kills, no errors, hitting 7-14. Hawaii hit 458 as a squad in that first set. On the side of the beach, uncharacteristically low 185 hitting percentage. They committed six hitting errors, and five of the last six points that went to Hawaii were Long Beach errors. And very uncharacteristic for that team. And I think that a lot of times Hawaii places the pressure and forces teams to do things that are outside of what they normally do. We've seen this last week. We don't expect Long Beach State 
to sort of lie over and die here. Oh. Watch them come out strong. That is not in their DNA, not under Allen Knight, that's for sure. Here's Von Tilburg, and he gets the scoring story for Hawaii here in set number two. Another strange aspect of the two meetings last week, there were an awful lot of those sets that were lopsided in nature. In fact, when you look at the night number two, the first three sets were decided by no fewer than seven points. What would explain that, you think? Yeah, we talked about the emotions that both these teams were playing with and so that the valleys were so deep and the highs were so high that oftentimes the momentum and the pendulum swing was just heavy on one team and heavy on the other. The key is really going to be who can side out consistently and really make sure that they don't have those runs. One serving one. And here's TJ DeFalco. Good pass there by Stein. He gets the set on the opposite side. Von Tilburg put that pass on the money. Perfect pass by Stein Von Tilburg. And Lisa Stranmaa said in the beginning of the broadcast that she believes Stein Von Tilburg was going to have to have a big match so far, proving to have just that. And he's now back to serve. 21 service aces on the year coming in. And that's an ace. Just as we mentioned the statistic, he delivers. And again, Charlie Wade saying that Steinbaud Tilburg was one of those players that were going to have to have a few runs from behind the service line. He's looking for Stein to score two or three points every time he serves. Pass by Siegfried. Backside, Ensign sends it long. Was there a touch? No touch. The beach players protesting, and they're going to convince Alan Knight to call for a review. He's looking for the review challenge paddle, but I think if he just verbally <laughs> communicates it, that'll be good enough. And so Tony Chan, the R2 down on the floor, is going to take a look at this. The challenge will be, obviously, a Hawaii touch. So Tony Chan, the R2. Let's take a look at the officials. Jesse Martinez is up atop the ladder. Matt Levo, Armando Gonzalez, Wes Kowachi, Ryan Scudder, the four line judges. Taking a look here, looking for Colton Cowell's hand. Hard to say on that angle. Let's see if we have a better look at it on this side. Yeah, it's hard. You know, we're dealing with cameras that are moving and following the ball, and so it's hard to really zone in. I think the touch-no-touch -touch replay review uh, with the resources that we have here at the Stan Sheriff Center is probably the most difficult review to get overturned. But we'll see. And again, it has to look convincing that there was a touch. It's hard to argue that, that there was a convincing enough, enough shot to warrant that turn to overturn. Everybody waiting on Tony Chan. <laughs> and he calls a touch. And Coach and Cowell smiles and says, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, all is right with the world then. Good juju, good karma. And that's a point for Long Beach State. Simone Anderson to serve. That's a heck of a serve, heck of a pass by Gage Worsley. The back set to Potapunov. And Tuaninga with the up. Ensign with just two-handed across. Advantage Hawaii. Can they take advantage? Rado through three blockers. And he stumbles across the net and actually trips up Ensign. Looks like everybody is okay, but the violation against Potapunov and the point once again to the beach. A good sportsmanship that time. Parapunov making sure that Ensign was okay. Apologize for that. Both players look to be good, but all started with a great first serve by Anderson. I mean, there's a lot of respect, obviously, between these two teams. It can get emotional. I mean, when you play at such a high competitive level, but obviously these two teams know how good their opponents are. As Patrick Gassman smacks it down, that's his first kill of the evening. Pat Jasmine, who has really come on strong as of late that time. They're going hard in the middle. A player that has really evolved as the season comes along and has developed into one of the nation's best middle blockers. Uh, 12 kills, two blocks on night two at Long Beach last week. Serves it right at Molina. Here's Siegfried, touches it past the block. Good cover there by Cowell. 
They go to Stein from the back row on the left side, dug up tight to the net, and then the set to Amato, who rips it down. And if there is a guy who gets things ramped up emotionally, it is that guy, Nick Amato. Yeah, no lack of energy from Amato. Every play is a celebration. Really a, a, a spokesperson for Red Bull. Yeah, he could be. He's like a Red Bull can with legs and neck veins. Insane. The pass by Worsley. His brother sets up Powell. He floated up there for a bit. Scrambled by Long Beach, and they somehow get it across. Great effort on all sides. Here's Cowell a second time. No return in that one. Kill number five for the Maui boy. Coates and Cowell will get that kill, but credit Dalton Sobrick for getting up in transition and holding the middle blocker a model that time. It's all the little things that has to happen in order for this team to be successful. Karapunov, great pass there by Siegfried. Amato played off the net there after the dig by Solbrig, and then Rado hits it into the net. He went for it. And a great dig by Gage Worsley, who's quietly having himself a nice night so far, passing well, reading things, and playing great cover defense. Tied a season high with 15 digs in the first match against Long Beach State last week. Pass there by Von Tilburg. Joust at the net. Worsley plays it off the ricochet. Bumps it outside to Cowell. The dink over the triple block. A net violation against the beach. Either way you slice it, it's a point for the Rainbow Warriors. Taking a look here on the replay. Nice beat shot that time by Colton Call and TJ's left hand follow through into the net. Great play again by Colton Cowell. Look at his stat line so far. Outside DeFalco. Just laying the lumber. That whippy arm swing. Now we're tied for the fifth time already here in the second set. And the crowd, you can sort of hear, groaned after that play. They recognized just what a tremendous hit that was. One-on-one -on -one against Joel Worsley and TJ picking up another kill. Falco went for a double-double on night two last week against Hawaii. 21 kills, 11 digs. But it is Nick Amado with the run-up floater. Outside, here's Stein, pushes it past the block. Punched up there by either DeFalco or Insing. DeFalco slaps it across to save their power. Backside set, Potapunov. Good cover there by Gage Worsley. To the other side, it's Von Tilburg. Another great cover by Gage Worsley. Saving that water, Paul Punov hit, and then Stein von Tilburg going sharp cross court off of TJ DeFalco. What do you think about the way Joe Worsley's been sending it back and forth along the net. Yeah, typical G Joe Worsley really keeping his offensive clicking, getting the middles involved, spreading out the wealth, playing a great game thus far. Seven serving six. Here it comes from Dalton Solbrig. And it's an ace. And Solbrig is fired up. And immediately Stein von Solbrig pointed back to the serve speed cam, highlighting how fast that serve was. And this is an area that Dalton is very proud of. He worked really hard in the offseason to get his serve going. Hawaii 15 and 0 in this building. Obviously feel very comfortable here. You can see it in just the body language as Ensign tools the block. That one narrowly missing that sideline. And we mentioned this is the third straight year that these two teams have met in a conference championship. And of course, three years ago, it was the MPSF Conference Championship. And last year, the first edition of the Big West Conference Tournament, taken by Long Beach State, by way of a sweep against Hawaii. And here they are. So the trilogy doesn't only depict the series here this season, but also the conference championships over the last three years. Insing, what an up there by Gage Worsley. Brother Joe goes back row to Cowell. Great defense by Gage Worsley yet again, and a dig by Josh Tuning off his chest. As you can see here, Cowell getting a kill from behind the three-meter line. 
But going back to what you were saying earlier about this rivalry, you know, this Hawaii team, they recognize they're not only playing for this championship, they're doing this for their other teammates as well. The class that has come before them, for all those other teams that have lost to Long Beach State in this match, they recognize they're doing this for those guys. The block was up on Insane. The Falco touches it over. Layout save Joe Worsley. Rado sets up Stein, and he hammers it off the block. Taking a look here, dive and dig by Joe Worsley, and that time Rado Parapuna showing that he's got some mittens. <laughs> Great set by the opposite. Give Parapuna the assist on his stat line. Meanwhile, SVT is filling it up pretty good. 10-7 here in set two. Great pass there, Molina. And sing, rising high. Can Von Tober chase it down? Yes, he can. Cowell then slaps it over. The beach on the attack. They go middle. It's Anderson off the block and down. Well, Anderson has not committed an error in now one plus matches in this tournament. As he went error free last night, nine kills, hit 750 against Santa Barbara. So far, four kills, no errors on six swings against the Warriors. Yeah, they're, Long Beach is definitely trying to exploit that middle. Four kills for him and Nick Amato with two kills as well. DeFalco, and that's an ace. And that was wicked. 64 mile an hour with movement located on the sideline. Good luck. It's a hard ball to pass. Going out to the left side. Nailing that inline in the crowd, actually booing him. He silenced the crowd with that serve. I mean, this is a Hawaii crowd at a volleyball match booing the other team. That's another thing that never happens. But obviously is more of a sign of respect than anything else as Von Tilburg is able to rouse up the fans once again. Going up against a triple block. Von Tilburg now with 10 kills, hitting 667. Yet to make an error tonight. Uh, we are seeing from the fans things that we haven't seen before, right? Standing up at the end of the set on set point for the home team. Backside. And that one will go down as a kill for Ensign. We're hearing some, some boos. I mean, usually, if anything, this is a Hawaii volleyball crowd that has been criticized for being too kind, too nice, and too appreciative of quality volleyball. The only other time I can remember at a volleyball game where a Hawaii crowd booed the opposing team was back in 2000 during the regional semifinal when Hawaii, the Rainbow Wahine, played Long Beach State. Palapunov. And that one bounced up into the chin of Anderson. And rattled the cage a little bit. Parpunov going down the line. Not sure if that was a blocking assignment that they want to give Parpunov that much line, because he will take it just like he did there. Here's Jakob Tella, the freshman setter from Norway. Both these teams also doing a pretty decent job of recruiting internationally in spots. Back row set to Falco at a wide open floor, sends it long. You don't often see that. And Hawaii breathing a sigh of relief that time. Dalton Silver going up with Nick Amato. Perfect execution by Joshua Niga, and DeFalco just catches it fat and goes wide. I mean, he looked like a long jumper there. Did you see how high he got there? Incredible. Hawaii gets the point, though, leading by three. Tella, good serve, overpass, one hand set to a Ninga, to a Amato. I'll make that, yes, and that was an exceptional set by Tuaninga. It looked like it was going to be an overpass. Pat Gasman was licking his chops. I mean, this was, it, that ball was bulleting over the net, and Tuaninga just puts his hand on it, redirects the ball, and not only that, delivers a perfect set, showing why he was a player of the year last season. I mean, the quality of his hands, how soft they are, the way he can control the sets, what else makes him so tough? He's just very calm, and he's very smart, and his delivery is just impeccable. Pass by Worsley, a good one. Backside, Rado. 
be up by Molina. And a free ball coming here for Hawaii. Rado the first touch. Worsley goes to Potapunov. Was a little tight to the net, and he gets roofed. Siegfried was up there next to Amato. Yeah, a little tight on that set by Joel Worsley that time there. You can see here, kind of trapped inside, especially if they're going to give Rado that line. See, they're stopping short a little. So this set here has to make sure that he gets all the way out to Nintendo so Rado can exploit that line. 12 serving 13. Ensing, another guy that can string them together. Second on the team in aces. 46 coming into tonight, and that is an ace on cue. But we may have a challenge from Charlie Wade. That was a blazer. Yeah, Gage Worsley immediately looked over at Charlie Wade and said that ball was out. Charlie then looked at the coaching staff, and I think that start was so fast that they didn't really see it. Now, for most Hawaii home matches, they would utilize, to signal the replay challenges, a paddle. Kind of like a, a table tennis paddle, but, you know, it's decorated with logos and stuff. But I guess for this Big West Conference tournament, it's a hard rule. No paddles. And that... Taking a look there, that looks like it's in. It catches the back line. And again, remind you, we have four linesmen working this game. Although that angle, it kind of looks more out than in. Mm. That's actually awfully close. Your guess is as good as mine here, right? This might be the best angle right here. Yeah, that looks like it's on it. From that angle, it looks like it caught a piece of that end line. Yeah. We shall see. Yeah, the trusty ping pong paddle left in the closet. Coaches have to just go for the good old C with their hand for the challenge. And so that will stand an ace for Ensign. And we are tied at 13. And this is just vintage Long Beach State, right? I mean, they get what amounts to a clobbering in set one, 25-15. And here they are dead even at the 13 mark. Another 70 mile an hour serve that time by Ensign. Cowell goes high hands and the diving save by Molina looked like it was going down, but we play on. Heck of an effort. Cowell a second time. Make sure. Great save by Molina back here. You can see Hawaii was already celebrating, and a diving save. And the finish by Colton Cowell going one-on-one, -on -one, hitting the seam back into the middle back. And that's a lot of trust. I mean, Insing also roaming back there. He had a feeling Molina would be able to get to that ball. Amato gets the point back for Long Beach State. And again, the middle's working hard here for Long Beach State, helping to keep them in this match. Boy, he's going to look to try to slow down Amato if they want to be able to contend with this Long Beach State squad. Amato has spent some time in this collegiate game, two years at Orange Coast College. Here he is now as a senior for Long Beach State. A first team all Big West Conference selection as Siegfried goes into the net. So Hawaii gets to 15 first, but a much tighter set number two. Get the greatest plays, hardest hits, and schedule info by following Spec Sports High on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We were just informed during the timeout. And this is confirmed that it is a sellout here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Second sellout of this volleyball season. And it just speaks volumes about how much people here in Hawaii care about this game. Maybe even overall the general health of men's collegiate volleyball. A conference championship match with 10,000 plus. To Aninga outside, hammered home by TJ DeFalco. And we're tied at 15. And you can see that those two have played together for a while. A transition play. Look at them running in. And a fast four set, like a shoot set. Straight to DeFalco. Hard to stop that play. And you just see the confidence surging here for TJ DeFalco and company. As Guinasso gets ready to serve. 
Another Huntington Beach High School product. Outside, it's Von Tilburg dug up by Siegfried. So DeFalco goes high ball to Ensing. Gets it down, and all of a sudden, the beach is in front. First lead change of this second set. And I think Hawaii has got to find a way to get their middles more involved here as you see the kill by Ensign. Right now, both Hawaii middles combining for just two kills so far midway into the second set. And also floats it down the line. Worsley from off the floor goes cross court to Von Tilburg, dug up by Guinasso. So Siegfried sets up to Falco, three blockers up, and he makes it work anyway. Look for Charlie Wade to call a timeout here soon to stop the bleeding as Long Beach State is now on a three-point run. Five kills for DeFalco. Hitting 214. Worsley goes backside. Here's Potapunov. Dug up off the net. Played by Anderson. Worsley dumps it down. And that breaks the three-point run for Long Beach State. And again, that's another thing I think Hawaii can see more of. Joel Worsley being aggressive and taking matters into his own hand. Same can be said about Josh Fuminga. We have not seen him dump. He's a very offensive setter. We'll see if he follows suit anytime soon. And he's a left-hander, which sort of adds to that threat. Here's Anastasiadis, and that's an ace! James Anastasiadis out of Huntington Beach High School. So he's going up against a ton of his fellow alums, as well as his younger brother on the Long Beach State roster. Alex is across the net. And his mom is here in attendance, watching both of her sons compete yet again against each other. They even had a t-shirt that was made to really wrap up the rivalry. Both from Cyprus. Oh, that is just smacked down by Anderson. He continues to roll. Nice hit by Anderson that time there, recognizing two blockers going up for Hawaii, and he just cut that ball back across his body, hitting where the blockers were not taking away. It was an ABCA All-American honorable mention last year, a freshman All-American, according to Off the Block and Volley Mob. Here's to Aninga's serve. It's an out serve. And Hawaii passes breathing a sigh of relief because Tuaninga is one of the better servers in the conference and on this Long Beach team. He had a fantastic run last night with Santa Barbara and Hawaii able to get out of that rotation quickly. Worsley, the serve. Perfect pass by Molina. Backside, the Falco is rejected. What a block by Stein von Tilburg. He has come to play. He almost has that Russell Westbrook kind of swag going on right now, using a lot of the same celebrations. That ball went right back into the face of P.J. DeFalco. Timeout, Long Beach State. Welcome back. Time now for the Tropical Roof Report. Five team blocks for Hawaii so far in this match compared to two for Long Beach State, but they just got a biggie, did the Rainbow Warriors from Stein von Tilburg. And another block where Stein von Tilburg actually was helping in the middle and had to catch up on that last play. We'll see where Tuninga goes in this set. Worsley with the serve, it's into the net. So we are knotted at 19 here in set number two. And interesting that time there, Joe, Joe Worsley actually serving from the middle of the court. He normally serves from the right side, and that time moving around, haven't really seen him do that this season. And here is the very dangerous TJ DeFalco. But the pass there by Stein, he gets the set, he's blocked. Chased down on the second touch by Gage. Bump sets Rado, who is blocked. Gassman able to tap it up. And a free chance here for the beach. Outside, Siegfried off the block and out. And Long Beach State moves ahead. You look at Rado Potapunov's hitting percentage here so far, Ryan. He's in the negative, 0-6-7 on 15 swings with four kills. 
Yeah, it's hard because a lot of times Wada Parapunas is taking the swings when Hawaii is out of system. So he's sort of the garbage man that has to clean up the trash, if you will. And so what that means is that the blockers for Long Beach State are almost camping on it and they know where he's going to go. So Hawaii going to look to see if they can get him more involved in the system plays where they can run him and prevent, provide more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. UH Athletics reaches out to you online each week with updates and promotions through its HMail e-newsletter. To register, visit hawaiiathletics.com and click on the HMail button. It's simple and it's free. Well, Long Beach State leads the all-time series with Hawaii, 47 to 42. That's pretty close. The beach has won nine of the last ten meetings, however, with the distinct advantage in the matches played at Long Beach. But we mentioned an official sellout here at the Stan Sheriff Center. I mean, we're talking the previous sellout prior to senior night against UC Santa Barbara was all the way back in 1997. So 22 years between sellouts, and now Hawaii has had two in what, 15 days? And imagine, if they continue to play, they would continue to sell this place out. These fans just love volleyball. And again, when they announced the starting lineup, this place was on fire. It just goes to show just the quality of volleyball and how much these fans love getting involved. You can see fans dancing in the crowd. <laughs> it's more than just the volleyball. Really, it's an experience. The way that they've incorporated the scoreboard over the past few, few years and really developed this into a family-friendly event, it's really quite unique. Of course, Long Beach State will host the NCAA tournament coming up, but I think what Charlie Wade and company are hoping is that they establish a relationship with these fans that can extend into the start of next season when everybody is expecting Hawaii to still be very good as DeFalco serves it into the net. So a couple of good timeouts from either side. Worsley with the service error out of the timeout by Allen Knight and DeFalco with the service error there after the timeout by Wade. But great calls by both coaches to sort of put a pressure on the servers and two of the best servers in, on this floor with those back-to-back -back errors. We'll see if Brett Rosemeyer can keep this in. Senior out of Virginia Beach. Pass by Molina to winning the backside. Ensign through the block and down. Eight kills now for Kyle Ensign. He's hitting 278. Great hit by Ensign. Going against Colton Cowell once again. And as we get to the 20s and in the last five points of this set, look for Ensign to get a lot of swings. Look for TJ DeFalco to get a lot of swings. They're going to ride their guns here. Well, both teams have turned the final pole in this set, so it's a race to the finish. Good pass there by Rosie. Backside Potapuno from off the net is able to work it off the block. That's a quality swing right there by Radapar Punov. That set kind of drifted off. He hit that ball at about the eight meter line. Eight foot line, excuse me. And able to split the seam right here, going off of Ethan Sidfrey. So we're tied at 21. Good serve there by Gassman to Aninga. Outside to Siegfried, tried to go high hand. No touch, point Hawaii, and we may have a challenge. TJ DeFalco vehemently arguing his case with Tony Chan. Saying that Hawaii was into the net, and the net is actually still shaking. We'll see if they challenge this, and they will. So is the challenge on the touch, no touch, or the challenge is on the net violation? I believe they're calling for the net violation after they saw the net shaking after that hit. And interesting enough, a similar situation happened in Long Beach in that fifth set where Ethan Siegfried hit a ball wide and Hawaii was into the net. That's right. I mean, how crucial is this review at this stage of this second frame? Now, this is a big call right here. I mean, just the psychology of Hawaii, if they're able to hang on in the second set, going into the locker rooms in front of a sellout crowd up 2-0 as opposed to 1-1. It changes everything. And this challenge again 
also serves almost as a timeout as we head down here as both coaches are able to talk to the team you can see Alan Knight talking to the team about and giving them instructions about what they need to do both these teams also have one timeout left remaining in this set so again Tony Chan with the headset on he's going to take a look at this see if we can tell from the net cam. The net shaking because of the serve. But was there a net violation by Hawaii afterwards? And there does not appear to be a touch from that angle. Talking about a touch on the net. I'm not sure. I mean, the net was shaking because of the serve and you could hear the Long Beach players arguing the net is still shaking. You can see her off the serve here. That's what triggers it. The net begins shaking. And it looks like Rado is clean. I... That ball is clearly out. Yeah. It really, to me, does not look like a net violation. Not from that angle, for sure. And you would imagine the net cam would be the best operational perspective and vantage point for that particular review. No touch. No, point Hawaii as the fans in the arena were performing the wave during that review. And this is an important serve right here by Patrick Gassman. He needs to keep this in play. 22 serving 21. He does pass by Insing to Aninga to a model diving save. Joe Worsley. Rosenmeyer sets up Harapunov. Three blockers up. He goes off the fingertips. And a net violation called against the beach. And the Hawaii coaches jump off the bench, recognizing the net. They are just as much into this match. You can see there looks like the back of Insing follows through into the net. 3-0 run for the Warriors. Timeout, Long Beach State. We will keep things here. How big was that review? And then the net violation, ironically, called against Long Beach State on the very next sequence. Yeah, just a turn of events there that time. And you got to also imagine Long Beach State has used two challenges, I believe. So they only have one more remaining. They have to be very smart about how they use this last remaining challenge. Also credit Pat Gassman keeping the serve in. That serve was not only in, but he also forced Ensign into, onto his knees, so Ensign was out as an option to hit. Well, you talked about the importance of that last serve by Pat Gassman coming out of the review. How about this upcoming service yeah, try? Even more so. And Pat Gassman at times, coming out of the timeouts or in very crucial, crucial situations, will sometimes just stay on the ground and do sort of that deep float serve just because he recognizes that his block can maybe play defense and he wants to make sure we keep it in. We'll see how confident he is in the jump serve coming out of this timeout. Long Beach State, the defending national champs, went 28-1 and last year. Their only loss came in regular season conference play on the final night, in fact. It was senior night here in this building, and Hawaii was able to win in a five-setter. Going back to that match, the Rainbow Warriors have now won 16 straight. That includes the 15-0 record here at the Stan Sheriff Center this season. But Long Beach State was so darn good a year ago. They went on to beat UCLA 3-2 in the national championship at UCLA, mind you. And among their losses, Bjorn Hoos, who obviously was a strong contributor at the outside hitter position, other than that, for the most part, role players who certainly played into the chemistry of that club. But they have the nucleus back. And they're hungry for more championships. Back row set to Falco. Unleashes. And Hawaii knew exactly where that ball was going. They were prepared. Rada Parabuna jumped in to help out. But TJ DeFalco cutting that ball. Cross body going back into area five. See the numbers on him. Six kills so far tonight. So Kyle Insing to serve. Into the net. A huge miss 
It is Aloha Ball for set two. And once again, they rise. And no one is happier to see these fans stand than Chris McLaughlin, something he's been campaigning for for a very long time. Finally happening here at the Stan Chair Center. Parapunov to serve. Pass by Molina to Aminga to Amato, dug up by Rosenmeyer over the net. And then Siegfried able to take advantage. Rosie almost conjured up another dynamic save. But it is still Aloha Ball for Hawaii and Ethan Siegfried getting ready to serve. Big serve here by the Punahou alum. Let's see if they if they go after Brett Rosenmeyer. He was in here for Stein von Tilburg in the passing. A, a very good passer though for Hawaii. Pass by Cowell, tight to the net. It'll be played on the beach side. DeFalco from off the twine. Two-hand save, Gage Worsley. Joe goes high and away to Cowell. Two sets to none. Taking the second, 25-23. And in front of another sellout crowd in the Big West Conference Championship, Hawaii will have a chance to crack open the broom closet. Let's check in with Scott. All right, coach, down 2-0. What do you need to do to get back in this? Win a set. I don't know what to tell you. We got to win a set right now. It's a, but we played real well in that game. Hit a high number, didn't create enough problems on block and defense side, which we didn't do, you know, the opposite of that in the first game. So we came back with a really good response. We did a good job offensive. We were right there. We were up late. Had a couple of tough, ball, tough calls or tough plays that went against us. But, uh, yeah, we got to keep our offense rolling like that, create some block of defense, and win set three, and just keep moving on. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. Good all. Back over to you. Thanks a lot, Scott. You just know this Long Beach State team is not going to go away quietly. Hawaii is in for a battle on the other side of this intermission. Stan Sheriff Center, where it is intermission for the Big West Conference Men's Volleyball Tournament Championship. And the home team, Hawaii, leading the number one seeded defending national champion, Long Beach State 49ers, two sets to none. Hi, everybody. I'm Scott, along with Lisa and Chris. And guys, this has been everything we thought it would be and more. It is so, so good. It's such good volleyball. It's kind of crazy. I mean, everything and more, absolutely. Great. It's great volleyball. And you know what else? It's going to be a long night because this Long Beach State team is not the kind of a team that's going to have yeah, so much pride. They're not going to give up easily. They're going to come out fighting after the, this intermission. And Charlie Wade and crew better be ready for them to make some adjustments. How about you think the crowd played a factor, particularly in that second set? Because last weekend, Hawaii probably loses that set at Long Beach State. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely the crowd it has been marvelous tonight. Fantastic, if you will. Chris McLaughlin has had his dream come true with them standing up. I've been lobbying for standing up on set point for about four years now. Tonight, for some reason, I didn't go out and lobby tonight on social media or anything. But all of a sudden, they all started standing up. At set point, I think it really made a difference for Hawaii, getting sort of extra energy at that point. Well, you guys both talked about the fact that Joe Worsley had to mix it up a little bit more than he did a week ago, and so far it seems like he's listening. Well, he definitely is. He's distributing the ball so well here as we take a look at a couple of the highlights. Not only distributing the ball, Rado Parabunov used his hands tonight as well. Uh, just a great team effort by all players so far tonight. I thought that Joe could have set the middle a little bit more. He's only setting the middle about 13 to 14% of the time. 
And to be successful in this league, I really believe you got to be set in the middle about 25% of the time. He was way below that. I think he'll change that these next couple of sets. Hawaii's up two sets to number. There's 10,000 nervous folks in the house. We'll take a break. Come back and have more from the corner. Back at the sold-out stand, Sheriff Center of Hawaii leads Long Beach State two sets to none. Alrighty, guys, what does Hawaii have to do here to close the broom closet, as Kanoa likes to say? Well, we really feel, Chris and I, I'm speaking for Chris a little bit here, but that Hawaii probably needs to get their middles established a little bit more. They have a total of six sets between them, whereas the, uh, all the outside hitters are 12 attempts and more. So definitely a little bit more uh, inclusiveness of the middle. I think Hawaii's also got to be ready to withstand a strong Long Beach State charge. How, how they can how they withstand that, how emotionally they, they take it. How, uh, because Long Beach State's going to come on strong, I'll tell you that right now. They were so good last week when they were down 2-1. They were really, really good. So Hawaii's got to be ready for that. Yeah, everybody has their fingers crossed, their toes crossed, everything crossed here in the Sheriff's Center. Hawaii leads two sets to none when we come back to serve to start set number three. Well, they're having some fun here at the Stan Sheriff Center. What was expected to be an epic crowd has certainly delivered. And so far, the Rainbow Warriors have delivered up 2-0 in this Big West Conference Championship match. Let's take a look at the match statistics. Ryan, what do you see? Well, that hitting percentage by Hawaii, 380, 397, a nice hitting percentage against Long Beach. You can see there the blocks, Hawaii out blocking 5-2 and also out serving them. Long Beach State hit 419 in that second set and Hawaii was 353, yet Hawaii was still able to win. It really comes down to a few plays here and there, the net call. Uh, also, James Anastasiades coming off the bench, come picking up at the ace. Those are the types of things that really equate, especially when the game is that close. All right, so we know through past experience, this is a Long Beach State team that has the heart of a champion. The, the making of a squad that can come back in a situation like this. But what does Hawaii have to be ready for? They have to be ready for it. Right there, Kyle Ensign and TJ DeFalco taking over this match. And also, the service pressure. Watch them to sort of ramp up. We saw this last week in Long Beach, where it almost seems like they just turned it to another gear from behind the service line. They've actually rotated and starting in a different lineup. So this will be a different matchup going into this third set. TJ DeFalco is now their first server. Hawaii trailing. 1-0 here, DeFalco with that serve. And the mistimed middle set there as Joe Worsley was trying to find Gasman. And so that gives Long Beach State the 2-0 advantage. Remember, the Beach trailed 2-1 in each of those five setters at Long Beach against Hawaii last week. They have only been down 2-0 one time prior this season. And that was on the road at USC. They ended up getting swept. A pretty unfamiliar territory for Long Beach State, but this is more like it as DeFalco with an absolute laser beam of a serve, and they're up 3-0. And that just goes to show you how good TJ is. That first serve, he went at Colton Kawa. Colton passes that perfectly, so he moved it and went after Stein von Tilburg that time. We'll see where he goes with this serve. Three serving zero. It's Cowell handling the pass. Worsley backside. Here's Von Tilburg off the block. Diving save. Joe Worsley. Brother Gage bumps at Stein. Cross court and it got a touch according to the line judge. So a point for Hawaii and a much needed point at that. Yeah, again, they rotate, Long Beach rotated their lineup, recognized they wanted TJ to start off the game serving. But that time there, three out of the four linesmen calling a touch. That sweet defeat at USC earlier this season. The only loss on record this year for Long Beach State. One serving three. Good serve there by Von Tilburg. Even better pass by Siegfried. Ensing was able to go off the block and down. And you can expect to see Ensing sort of step it up here, picking up his 10th kill of the night. Gasman unable to close the seam, kind of diving into that block, unable to get a touch. 
And seeing and Von Tilburg each with double figures in kills as Anderson goes into the net. 11 service errors now for Long Beach State. That's not necessarily unexpected. They are a team that likes to, so to speak, grip it and rip it from the service line. Gassman, that was a pretty good rip. Overpass, and Colton Cowell says, Mahalo, Nui Loa. Gassman going towards DJ DeFalco, causing the overpass. Easy kill for Colton Cowell. He picks up his 10th kill. He didn't get this 7-14, yet to make an error. Not too bad for a guy who stands at 6-1. A walk-on initially in this program who was intending to compete at the libero position. As Gassman goes into the net. So here is Ensing. Took a little something off that time. Worsley goes high and away to Cowell. Up the ladder and down the shoot. Colton Cowell started off strong in set one and continuing on here. He is not letting up, having himself one of, I think, the best weekends we've seen him play thus far, really saving it for when it matters the most. He has got some serious bounce. Rado goes deep at the serve. Siegfried rising high. The guy who on his side also stands at just 6-1 showing some incredible leaping ability. And again, that last, that second night, these two teams met in Long Beach. Siegfried had 16 kills, hit 556, really turned it on. Right now tonight, five kills, hitting only 200. We'll see if he can also improve those numbers. Six serving four. Oh, out of system. So the high ball goes to Cowell, three blockers up. The dig along the back line there by Siegfried. DeFalco sets up Insing. Blocked in roof. And little Joe Worsley got the gist of it. And the family section up on their feet. Joe Worsley with the triple block going in. TJ setting Ensing that time there. And nice block by little Joe Worsley. So now the King Kekauluke graduate. Colton Cowell with the serve. And into the net it goes. So now Nick Amato, we mentioned, he's been in this collegiate game for a while. Actually had two redshirt years at Long Beach State. A medical redshirt in 2017 after a traditional redshirt in 2016. Solbring straight down to the floor. And I definitely agree with Lisa Strenma, where Hawaii has got to get their middles more involved. Just the seventh set to the middle so far tonight. Dalton gets up early and able to beat the blocker Anderson before he even gets up on the block. <laughs> Solbrig among the senior class playing in his final game in this arena. To Aninga. Oh, Joe Worsley was ready for it. Got a piece, and so Hawaii now on the attack. Von Tilburg goes off the block and out. It was setter versus setter that time. Twininga going up against Joe Worsley because of the switch block. Joe back setting that ball and Stein wiping it off the block there. And the argument from Alan Knight appeared to be that maybe the touch by Stein hit the pin first before the block. But it is instead a Hawaii point seven serving seven. <laughs> that was one of those Chris McLaughlin touch them alls there from Dalton Solbridge. Third service error for Hawaii in this set. They've got to settle that down, making a few more errors than I know Charlie Wade would like. Yeah, he wants to see them keep the pressure on. Here's Tuaninga, his younger brother, Gus, a former outside hitter at Hawaii. And that's Gassman finding the deep corner. And Gassman had a big night the last time these two.
two teams hit played, hit 550 tonight. His second kill and only hitting 143. We'll see if he can get those numbers going up and see if Joe Worsley gets him more involved in this offense. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just a bit long. Well, I don't think they need a challenge for that one there. <laughs> Unfortunately, Long Beach's best server now back to serve after those four missed serves from Hawaii so far in this set alone. DeFalco into the net. <laughs> and it's become a battle of serving attrition here in the third. And again, this crowd is really helping and standing behind this home team. Tied for the third time here in set three. Here's Von Tilburg. Took a little something off there. And that's how Long Beach takes advantage. Simone Anderson has yet to commit a hitting error in this tournament. Sister played for the Danish national team, majoring in applied mathematics with an option in finance. Serves it right at Gage Worsley. Here's Rada with one blocker up, and Siegfried able to block it back. Middle set, Gassman stuffs it through Amato. Punched up in the air. Ensign gets a swing at it, but he sends it long. And both these teams, you can tell, won it really bad. Hawaii just staying alive with some great heads-up plays and some nice touches on the block as we see Jakob Tella come back into the match. Now you would imagine quite possibly the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament could be on the line here tonight. Tilla tickles the tape. Turning the backside, Ensign just one blocker up. It was Powell, and Ensign just explodes on it. Big hit here by Ensign. You can see going up against Colton Powell and taking that line going deep into the corner. Right now into 11 kills, hitting 261. And every time Long Beach State gets ready to serve, the crowd turns up the volume knob. Here's Rado through the block. Good save along the back line by DeFalco. Ensign comes flying in, cross court dug up over the net. Siegfried tried to get it down, he does narrowly. The smart shot by Siegfried that time, just hitting it into the corner. Oh boy, thinking that ball might be going out, but able to catch that ball inside the line. Yeah, that was a miss hit there by Siegfried, but <laughs> he's smiling. He'll take it. A point is a point is a point. 12 serving 10. And I think the crowd almost thinks that it's their responsibility right. to make Long Beach serve into the net. I mean, they are exploding after every service area just as much as they are for what you kill. The seventh man, if you will. And that's an ace! And I think Alan Knipp and company want to challenge that, but I think he's concerned about using a challenge too early. We'll see here on the replay if that was a good decision not to challenge. Ooh. Hard to say, I think that ball caught the back line. Um, you could say if it didn't, that's a little athletic justice there. Long Beach State gets the point. They're up 13-12. But yet another service error for Hawaii. They're fifth so far in this set. Here's Siegfried. Pass by Cowell. Worsley surveys across the net and sets up Cowell. Who lights that set on fire. Makawal Masher is really in full effect here tonight. Mawi Mawi goes over the, and outside the block. He's on fire again, yet to make an error. Started just one match last year was 
basically a serving specialist. Then got to work in the weight room. Got his game right. Battled Brett Rosenmeyer for that starting outside hitter position and was able to win that battle. And he has not relinquished it here throughout the year. Does serve it long there. Like you said, Ryan, that starts to come back to haunt you against a team like Long Beach State. Right, you cannot be giving up three points like that, especially on your home court where you should have the advantage from the service line. Worsley outside. Here's Stein off the fingertips of the block. One hand save to Falco. He gets the set from Ensing. The roll shot. Diving save, Gage Worsley. And he returns it to Aninga. Middle set. That's Anderson off the block. Rado plays it. Back row, Cowell. The up there by Amato. So the high ball will result in a free chance here for Hawaii. Outside, Von Tilburg. Diving save by Amato, incredible. Here's Ensing off the fingertips of the block. And down, Long Beach State wins a marathon rally. And they get to 15 first here in set number three. You thought they would go away? It's Long Beach. Think again. Well, we got some prep volleyball coming up. Tune in to Spectrum OC16 on Monday at 5.15 p.m. for the OIA Boys Volleyball Semifinals exclusively on Spectrum. So Long Beach State up two, and Nick Amato floats it across. Whereas he goes backside, here's Rado blocked and roof, and he stumbles to the floor. Long Beach State now up three, and that particular attempt didn't look like it had a ton behind it, Ryan. Radapar Punov continuing to struggle here. We saw him start off hot, but he's yet to get a kill here in this third set. Yeah, he's flatlining it for the match. Six kills, six errors. Hawaii trailing by three. Worsley goes middle. Solbrig got the touch, and it's a point for the Warriors. And again, I think Hawaii needs to continue to do more of that. Get that middle blockers involved. Right now, Long Beach State's blockers are sort of camping out on Hawaii's outsides. They're having success, but I think they'd have even more success if Hawaii is able to get more offensive production from the middles. Right now, Soberg, three kills. Here's Anastasiadis. Moved to California from Cyprus during his high school career. Perfect pass there outside. The Falco off the block and out. He hits it with such incredible force. You're just surprised afterwards that the blocker's arms are still attached. <laughs> 17 serving 14. Worsley goes middle, it's Gassman, paint brushed it, so Hawaii still with it, goes to Von Tilburg, high hands, gets the touch. And a much needed kill for Stein Von Tilburg. A little quiet here going into the third set, picking up just his second kill, going high hands this time, recognizing the big block, 13 kills, he also has yet to make an error, hitting 520. There's Worsley. To Aninga, high and away. Ensing is blocked, punches it up, tapped down, but unable to find the floor was Gassman, and it's sent over the net. Free chance for the Warriors. Von Tilburg! And a little uncertainty that time on Long Beach State on the coverage play, resulting in a Hawaii free ball opportunity, one on one for Stein. Joel Worsley now will see if he goes with the float serve or the jump serve. He floats it and drifts it long. What'd you think of that one? I think he went for the jump float to keep the serve in. So when you jump float and serve it long, that does definitely does not help your cause. And again, TJ the Falco back to serve. 18 serving 16. Cue the crowd. Pass by Cowell, a pretty one. Gassman in the middle. And in the words of Charlie Wade, more of that. He likes when that happens. Perfect pass that time by Colton Powell. 
That was some gas, man, from Pat Gasman. 6'10 junior from Clovis, California. And as we play further into this match, more and more time being taken between sequences to wipe the perspiration off of the Terraflex. Bodies on the deck just about every single serve. Molina. Back row, DeFalco demolishes. And with hits like that, you can see why this young man is on the USA national team, expected to compete for Olympic in Japan. Just an absolute crush out of that big pipe. Yeah, made the USA team roster for the 2017 FIVB World League. And just a glimpse as to why. Here's Potapunov through the block and down. A much needed put down for Rado, his first in this set. And a good, again, a nice pass by Hawaii. You can see there, this is what Rado likes to see, a split block with the seam. Those are the type of plays that are able to produce more kills for Rado instead of just the out-of-system high ball hits. And what do we get from Gassman behind the line? High toss. And he misses wide. I mean, service errors without a doubt. The headline in this third set for the Rainbow Warriors. And at this point, it just becomes a mental thing. They're trying not to make errors, that it's actually becoming a negative thing that's in their mind. They have got to remain positive and confident from behind the service line. Here's Ensign. He can bring the heat. Decides to take something off. Worsley goes outside. Cowell off the block. He's roofed. To Aninga, right next to Nick Amato. To Aninga, eyes wide, eye in a fourth set. Welcome back. Take your internet with you. Spectrum Internet customers get free unlimited access to over 4,000 Wi Fi hotspots across the islands. Well, the service line has been a cold spot for the Warriors in this third set. Eight service aces, it has opened the door for Long Beach State, leading by three in Hawaii, big time out of system. Free chance here for the beach to Aninga outside. And Siegfried is roofed. A much needed stop by Hawaii, giving the free ball opportunity for Long Beach to run their offense and brought up our Punov closing in on the block. Solo stuff for the first team, all Big West selection. And he now retreats back behind the line to serve. And he serves up an ace. And this place goes absolutely crazy. They get an ace instead of an error here. Second ace in this set for Wadaparapuna. Good luck returning that thing. Siegfried, overpass. Cowell couldn't put it down. Here's Siegfried. Played up tight to the net, little joust there. Hawaii now with it. Cowell up the ladder. Save along the back line by DeFalco. Here's Insing, and he finds that deep corner. Point for Long Beach State. <laughs> what a hit by Insing. That ball was right in the corner. Charlie Wade was going to call the challenge. Brett Rosenmeyer walks over to him and says, no, 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 that ball was in, and it certainly was. Ensign racks up mileage through the air when he approaches a ball. I mean, he just broad jumps from behind the line. Good pass there by Cowell. Backside, Potapunov. And that's a point for the beach. So Long Beach State now in position here, 23 serving 20. Looking to avoid the sweep and send this to a fourth set. Perfect pass that time by 
Brett Rosenmeyer off the bench, putting up that perfect pass for Dalton Solbrink. Solbrink picking his spots, four swings, four kills, batting a thousand. And now Colton Cowell got to get this in. Took a little something off. Beach on the attack. Here's Ensing. Blocked back. Good cover there by Siegfried. The other way. It's DeFalco. Dug up by Cowell. Cross court set on Tilburg. Off the block and out. Point Hawaii. They're within a single digit. And we'll see if Long Beach State decides to call a timeout here. As we see Stein von Tilburg tooling the block. And indeed, Alan Knipe will signal for a timeout. Well, we had a little drama in the LBC last week. A little drama here at the end of set three in the HNL. And this crowd is loving it. You know, we've seen somewhat celebrities here in the crowd. I mean, there's the Senate president here, politicians, notable chefs. Uh, you know, a lot of, this is the place to be tonight. Forget Coachella <laughs> in California. This is Hawaii's Coachella right now. There's Chef Chai right there. <laughs> but it's amazing to see how this has become the hottest ticket in town with so many people wanting to be at this game. David Niffin, head coach for UC Irvine. He'll be watching that selection show closely on Sunday. Obviously feels like his anteaters deserve an at-large into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, he is actually saying that he believes that their case is actually stronger this year than maybe it was last season because he says, we're the toughest conference out there. Five of our losses have come to the number one and number two ranked team in the country. Basically, you got three teams in Irvine, UC Santa Barbara, and USC who will be watching that selection show and feeling like they each have a legitimate shot and a legitimate resume to keep in mind regarding the at-large. Aron Gannat and company in the house. Yeah, great to see the other sports here supporting I mean, their home team. That tells you. He's the head coach of the Rainbow Warrior basketball team, and he's sitting like rows up. You know what I mean? Upper DD. <laughs> Telling you, it was a hard ticket to get. Hey. Had people asking me. I said, uh, I'm going to have to ask somebody else. 22 serving 23 out of the timeout. Perfect pass there by Siegfried. Here's Amato in the middle. The block out of touch. But nobody had the back of Dalton Solbrick. And a point for Long Beach State. It is Aloha Ball here in the third for the beach. Hesitation that time between Gage Worsley and Stein von Tilburg. A diggable ball, but both players sort of not reading that ball correctly. Surprised that Charlie Wade has not used his second time out here in this third set. It's Nick Amato to serve. Floats it over, two hand pass there, Cowell. Outside, Von Tilburg against a solo block. How did DeFalco scoop that? And then he goes off the block and out. Point Long Beach State and the defending national champions showing some grit here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Get comfy, folks. No sweep tonight. A Big West Conference championship match that will go into extras. Welcome back, Kyle Insing leading the way for Long Beach State. He has 13 kills, the only player in double figures, in fact, hitting 286 on the evening. Yeah, really providing that offensive lift for the Long Beach State squad. And not only that, but he really unleashed some bombs from behind the service line as well. Insing always kind of helping to bail Long Beach out in some of those broken plays. And hard to stop when you have been him as well as TJ DeFalco. So as this match now gets extended to a fourth set, if you start to see this match further extending, as we go deeper into this fourth stanza, who's that an advantage for? You know, I think Hawaii still has the advantage. It's their home court advantage. But there's a saying in volleyball, the third set is the most important set, no matter what the situation is. Long Beach State proving to get that. We'll see how Hawaii responds here. Eight service errors will not help your cause. For the third straight time, Hawaii is up 2-1 on Long Beach State. 
Can they finish it this time? It was interesting. They were playing Don't Stop Believing by Journey during the break in between the sets. And for Hawaii, you kind of get the feeling they got to find a way to win this match just to establish that belief that they can beat this team. And Kyle Insing well, just continues his onslaught. Now 14 kills to get the beach started in the fourth. And again, Long Beach State actually flipped their lineup yet again. So their first server this time around is now Josh Tuininga. Remember that third set, it was TJ DeFalco. One serving zero. Gasman is blocked back. Good cover there by Gage Worsley. Back row set. Powell with the thunder. And a new career high in kills for the former King Kekaulike Na'ali'i. Colton Kao saying he's not stopping believing right there with that absolute hammer from the back row. 13 kills and 522 to go along with six digs and two blocks. To Aninga, middle set, Anderson had to just touch it over, so a backside set from Gassman. Are you serious? And that's something Pat Gassman absolutely loves. In serve and pass, in a lot of the free play, the free time that this team has, he likes getting in there and setting. Remember, he actually set at one point in his career, early on in his high school days. And then the service error by Joe Worsley. They had eight service errors, did the Warriors, in that third set. And they ended up losing by three points, 25-22. Yeah, big deciding factor, I think, in that third set was those service errors. They have to get off to a much positive start. DeFalco, two service aces on the night. Worsley has to lay out just to get it up. Here is Von Tilburg. And he gets a touch and points through the net in enthusiasm as Hawaii takes the early lead. And this was a very difficult play. Joe Worsley back setting, facing us actually, going right over his head and Stein Von Tilburg smartly going high hands. Von Tilburg has been exceptional. 17 kills hitting 567. No errors. Back row. DeFalco sends it long. He's done that a multitude of times tonight. The uncharacteristic, especially when he has no blockers up there. You almost got to think if T.J. DeFalco is kind of pressing a little too hard, he's kind of going for those straight down kills when really he needs to just sort of pull it back just a little. Backside, it's insane. Dug up, and Cowell tried to play it back, unable to do so. And he slipped into the signage over there. DeFalco checking on him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ensing continued to be a real thorn in Hawaii's side. Now 15 kills, still hitting 333. The 2018 off the block Brian Ivey Award winner given annually to the best opposite hitter. And Kyle Insing has been as good as anybody. Three serving four. Here it comes from Anderson. Joe goes middle to Gasman, just dinks it over. Oh, but the back row set a little missed time. So Hawaii now with a chance. Here's Von Tilburg from the back row. He's in a groove. And Joe Worsley knows it. He kind of almost feels when those players are getting hot. And Stein Von Tilburg right now is feeling it. Picking up yet another kill. A three blockers can't stop Stein von Tilburg that time. Coming into the tournament, second nationally in kill percentage, ninth in the nation in kills per set. And he has brought it all here so far tonight. Gassman with the serve, Molina on the money. Middle set, Amato gets it down. Potapunov goes diving into the bench area. We love the effort, but from Hawaii's standpoint, you want to make sure that he's okay here as you move forward in this match. A somewhat risk-reward type of situation there, trying to keep that one alive. It's sort of an odd assistant play that time because Stein von Tilburg was actually in the left-back position. As Pat Gassman served and played middle-back. Usually we have Gage Worsley in that left-back position. Four serving five. 
It's Ensign. Blasted. Overpass. Smacked down by Siegfried. Point Long Beach State. We're not at five. All started by that tough serve by Ensign. Going off Stein von Tilburg that time. Easy kill for Ethan Siegfried. Into the net. And this is a big turn, I think, right now for Hawaii with Rada Parpunov back to serve. He had two aces in that third set. If he can get on a run and help to sort of give Hawaii some breathing room, that will really help their cause here. Pass by Insing to Aninga. High ball outside. Siegfried had the left hand touch it over. Chance for Hawaii. Here's Cowell. Just crushing it. Maui built going down the line that time there. And again, it actually started with a great serve by Rado Parapunov, keeping the serve in, but also putting pressure on Long Beach. Career-high 14 kills now for Kawu to Aninga. Sets up in St. Cross Court. Right there is Parapunov with the dig. Von Tilburg from the back row. And Parapunov saying, hey, I can play defense too. That was a bomb by Insing. Great up by Parapunov. And Worsley setting up Stein von Tilburg. 19 kills, hitting 594. Timeout, Long Beach State. 19 kills for Stein von Tilburg, hitting 594. 32 attempts, no errors. It is also his last match in this building. And he is hoping, as are the roughly 10,000 people in this arena, that he goes out with a blast. Parapunov goes into the net on the serve out of the timeout. But the important thing to know, he was able to score three points off that service run. That's exactly what Hawaii wants. So even if he had that error, he was able to get some points and some separation here. Hawaii just needs to keep siding out now. Here's Siegfried. That's now 15 total service errors for Long Beach compared to 14 for Hawaii. How do you measure the way these two teams have served here tonight? Yeah, it almost seems like the team on the other side is having a harder time whenever the team on the right side of the court seems to be serving. But you can tell that both of these teams are not letting up. They are still going strong. To an angle goes backside and saying hammers it home. And this is the tough part for Hawaii when you are playing a team like Long Beach. That time there, they said Joe Worsley, you can see here, going one-on-one -on -one against Ensign because they actually thought that they were going to set TJ DeFalco, so they sent Slime Von Tilburg to the right. So Hawaii continue to play a chess match in that front court with their blocking schemes. Long Beach volleyball, a family thing for the Ensigns. Brother Eric also played for the beach as Potapunov tried to go deep corner. And he misses long. And so that's a point for Long Beach State. Potapunov now back into negative numbers as that is his eighth hitting error compared to seven kills. And the wheels turning in the dome of Charlie Wade. Worsley outside. Here's Von Tilburg dug up by Amato. So Siegfried goes high ball. DeFalco just shoves it through the block. And Long Beach State is drawn even after its own 3-0 run. And again, it's this serve by Nick Amato. For some reason, he seems to get these streaks when he goes back there and serves. A very easy serve. And not only that, they're not playing without a libero on the court, but Amato's playing great defense. A little knuckler across. Worsley, middle to Solbrig. Didn't catch it flush, but he sliced it down for a Hawaii point. The reactions of Dalton Solbrig after every play that he makes are probably my favorite. That time there, he's like, ah. It's almost like a emoji maker here. Yeah. Could have been better, is what he's thinking. 
Five kills on five attempts, though. Can't get any better than that. Good serve. How about the pass by Molina? Here's Insane cross court, dug up by Parapunov, falling to the floor. The set to Von Tilburg just touches it through the block. Chance here for the beach. They go middle. Anderson is blocked. Gassman plays it off the ricochet. Stein is blocked back. The cover by Solbrig. Worsley. Here's Rado. And I'll tell you what, that is a much needed kill for Rado Parapunov. Just his confidence. He's struggling a bit here in the latter parts of this match. He is now screaming to Milan Zarkovic and gave him a big hug. He is so happy he just got that kill. Yeah, that communication between Parapunov and Milan Zarkovic, the assistant for Hawaii, was pretty fantastic. 11 serving nine. Another good serve by Solbrick. Outside, and DeFalco just slam dunks it. And this is a play that, and a hit that TJ likes to hit often. You can see here, he just kind of hangs and slam tips this ball straight down. It's actually very difficult to defend because even if you have a block up there, you risk the chance of him tooling you. 10 serving 11. Tickles the tape. Orsley goes middle to Gassman and he's blocked in roof. DeFalco was on the scene. Not a lot of options that time for Pat Gassman. He had a wall of Long Beach right in front of him, waiting. 11 serving 11. Again, it catches the tape. Gassman with the first touch. High ball to Stein off the block. Played by Gassman again. Worsley jump set to Parapuno. Great coverage by Hawaii that time after the triple block by Long Beach State. They were able to run a transition play and get a much needed side out by Parapuno who went down the line. And Gassman playing on that sequence like he had the libero jersey on. Here's Worsley, 12 serving 11. Backside to Falco, crushes. And Potapunov arguing that one of the Long Beach players came under the net, but the top official Jesse Martinez saying that the ball was down prior to. Okay, so the ruling is that player cannot interrupt the play. And so Martinez saying that the play was already dead when the violation was made. So 12, serving 12. And it's TJ DeFalco. Cowell handles the pass. Gassman in the middle, goes high hands. The save by DeFalco. Here's Ensing. Block. And Ruth. And you almost knew that ball was going back to Ensing. Hawaii read that ball well in the transition play. Great dig by DeFalco by T.J. DeFalco and Gassman closing the seam, picking up another block for Hawaii. So Von Silberg to serve. DeFalco pops it straight up in the air to Aninga. High ball to Siegfried. Cross court dug up by Gage. Here's Cowell. He's blocked, but plays it off the net. It's going to be a point for Long Beach State. A double hit is called against Hawaii as Cowell Got that one stuffed, his second hitting error of the match. Yeah, Powell actually swung into the block. It hit him twice before Hawaii made that third contact. So tied at 13 and number 13, Simone Anderson to serve for the beach. You having fun yet? Are you not entertained? I mean, this really comes down to what everyone in the country wanted to see. These two teams who have battled all season long. It's sort of like these two have sort of separated themselves from the rest of the country as a top echelon of men's collegiate volleyball. To an angle backside, and sing. There was only Kala left on an island. And Ensign absolutely gobbled it up. Yeah, this could very well be the third of four installments between these two teams here in the closing weeks of the season, with the fourth coming with the biggest stakes. 
of them all in the NCAA tournament. We will see. Both these teams are in. We know that. And that's an ace by Ensign. Just drops it off of a table, and Long Beach State gets to 15 first. They're thinking five in Hawaii toward that effort. Well, TJ DeFalco starting to get rhythmic. 12 kills. He's now up over 300, hitting 308. And Hawaii recognizing it's very difficult to stop TJ DeFalco because he has so many shots in his arsenal. I mean, look at this highlight reel. Each of those kills were got in a different manner. It's hard to stop a player like that. He also has nine digs, so one dig away from another double-double performance against Hawaii. 15 serving 14 out of the timeout, and another ace by Ensign. That time there, Ensign decided to go with a changeup. Didn't go for the heater, and that ball just sort of died as soon as it came over the tape. You get the feeling this is a crucial juncture for Hawaii in terms of its psyche here against Long Beach State. The team that just doesn't go away. And that one blasted long. Went with the heater that time. But Long Beach State still with the advantage. And again, Waddle Park, Runoff going back to serve. See if he can get another run like we saw moments ago earlier during his last rotation here from behind the service line. Two service aces for Potapunov. Molina with the perfect pass, middle, it's Amato. And Nick Amato comes through again. And that was a bomb of a serve by Parapuna, but a great pass and a kill by Nick Amato. Well, they got to give props here to Jordan Molina, another part of that senior class. His parents actually growing up in part here in the islands. And so while he was born and raised on the continent, it's a little bit of a family type of homecoming for Molina. And he's bowling out. Here's the Falco over three blockers and down. And Long Beach State right now continues to pick up ahead of steam. And now they're sort of figuring out Hawaii's hitters, Colton Cowell, who was having success earlier, is that now they're at least touching the ball of, of the attempts of Cowell and playing defense around that. Siegfried to serve. And we're going to have a rotation violation against Hawaii. That's a point for Long Beach State. That makes it 19-15, and Charlie Wade is going to signal for a timeout. Those are the kind of self-inflicted wounds. You look back at set three, the eight service errors. And then you have an inexplicable rotational violation against Hawaii at a very important stage of this fourth set. And if you're the Rainbow Warriors, and maybe even a lot of the fans here in the arena, you're starting to question, what is it going to take to take down the defending national champs? Yeah, it cannot happen off those kind of rotation violations. Joe Worsley, I think, was actually in a different rotation as position. We can see here that Joe Worsley should have been, he's here positioned right here in the middle of the court. So these are your three attackers here. Joe Worsley was actually supposed to be right over here coming out of that rotation. So oftentimes it's difficult to remember where you are because you're spinning so often and the game gets long. But credit the down rep for seeing that. And Long Beach State also, I think, recognized that as well and actually gave the heads up to the bottom ref saying that Hawaii was out of rotation. Long Beach State now up four. And that has to feel like a Grand Canyon-sized chasm for Hawaii at this stage of the fourth set. It just seems as though Long Beach State, for whatever reason, has the ability to get stronger in these deeper matches. And this crowd doing all that they can to kind of get Hawaii back into it. They're doing the wave now. You can definitely sense that the crowd is a lot quieter, and that's something that Long Beach State had to do, is quiet this crowd down and not to let them become a distraction, but they're trying to help reel this team back into it. Well, Long Beach is thinking a fifth set. 
in this round three matchup. 19 serving 15. Pass by Von Tilburg. Worsley goes high and away to Cowell off the block. Beach in transition. Here's the Falco left-handed swing. Scramble play Hawaii. Solberg with the left just touches it over. No blockers up, but the dig by Gage on Ensing. Here's Patapunov. They need it. He gets blocked. Worsley goes high and away again. Cowell blasts it off the hands and out. Much needed side off by Hawaii. Gage Worsley helping to keep his team alive here. You can see there, Kawa just tooling the block. Amato screaming out there, trying to fly out to save that block. But Kawa actually uses his hands that time. And it's now Kawa behind the service line. Good serve, forces the overpass. Von Tilburg can't get it down. It's slapped over by DeFalco. Layout save, Kawa. Here's Von Tilburg again. What a set by Joel Worsley, falling down, running towards the end line, actually side set that ball. Check this out right here. He tracks it down, back side sets to Von Tilburg. That was simply amazing. That was unbelievable. Hawaii within two. As they take a few moments to wipe more perspiration off of the court. And the fans actually booing as the coaching staff comes off and talks to each of the players during that floor wiping. And it becomes a de facto timeout for Long Beach State. And a late arrival in the house as the Gov, David Ige, we just noticed, has walked in and sitting behind the server, Colton Cowell. Hey, better late than later. Well, David and Don happy about that play right there. The ace serve by Cowell. Couldn't come at a better time. And the crowd is back up and in this. And so is Hawaii. Eight serve, 18 serving 19. Pass by Siegfried, a perfect one outside DeFalco. And he just blows up Gage Worsley. One-on-one -on -one opportunity for TJ DeFalco, and he will win 95% of those battles. 14 kills, nine digs, hitting 333. And here is Amato. Remember the service run he put together earlier. Pass by Cowell again, gets Hawaii out of system, so high ball, Stein slams it down, but it's returned. Here's Stein a second time off the block, kept alive by Insane. beat for the advantage, DeFalco dug up by Cowell. Worsley, back row to Colton, couldn't get all of it. Here's DeFalco over the block and in, and Hawaii with several opportunities could not cash in. And the beach adjusting to Hawaii's offense here. Von Tilburg seeing a double block in front of him almost every time. Hawaii's got to find some other wrinkles here. You can see Worsley talking to about his options and where he should be going in these situations. How about the defense by Long Beach State, especially on that first hit by Stein Von Tilburg? It looked like it was going down. They pinball it around and somehow get it back over to extend the play. And something about this rotation with Nick Amato, I mean, he may be a middle blocker, but he plays incredible defense, a sprawling dig. Let's take a look here at the defensive plays by Long Beach going. That slam tip, Amato's diving save, and Siegfried gets it across. And this is a free ball opportunity. Hawaii should be able to convert here, but you can see here, their double block actually helps stop the block of Von Tilburg. And DeFalco will end up actually getting a kill here after Colton is not able to execute on that pipe set. The other thing that's a factor here is Hawaii is not necessarily setting Rado Parapuna as much here. So in a lot of these plays, because Rado is actually struggling, Joel would actually have, would likely back set to Rado during these bailout plays. But we haven't seen a lot of that here in the third or fourth set. 
Potapunov with nine kills, hitting 0-38. The lead is back to three here for Long Beach State. And you can sense the anxiety here in the Stan Sheriff Center, this enormous, raucous crowd. One of the things that the coaches have wants Colton Powell to do on this serve is take it with his hands. You have much more control on a float serve when you're strong and aggressive over your head rather than relying on a platform that see if he's able to take this ball up high. Float serve, two-hand pass, Powell and Solbrig smacking it home. Perfectly executed. Great pass by Cowell, being aggressive with his hands. And now James Anastasiadis, who had a very timely ace earlier in the match, hoping to have a Hana hole right here. Solbrig near perfection, six kills, seven attempts, no errors. And you see the exhale a couple of times by Anastasiadis. This is a biggie right here. Great serve. How about the pass by Molina, though? Ensing gets it down. The against the grain set by Tuaninga. And Ensing delivers on his 18th kill of the match. Bontel was able to get a hand on that, but Hawaii's defense unable to play transition defense around that. And so Tuaninga now to serve. Worsley, high and away, it's Stein off the block and down. That is now 21 kills for Stein von Tilburg. And Ryan, he has not committed an error. I don't think we've ever seen this type of match from Stein von Tilburg. He is locked in, and the, the really amazing part is how consistent he has been. No errors, and really providing that offensive lift. Worsley tickled the tape. And then it's put home by Anderson, thanks to another brilliant pass by Jordan Molina. He is putting on a show in server scene. And Simone Anderson also continuing his perfect ways, yet to make an error, picking up his seventh kill. He hasn't committed an error this week. 23 serving 20. Worsley backside, here's Stein through the block, DeFalco to save to Aninga. Goes to Ensign, cross court, and a net violation goes against Hawaii. Point, Long Beach State, and they have Aloha ball here in the fourth, and they are on the verge of sending this to a fifth set for the third straight meeting. And Hawaii becoming very predictable here in their offense, almost going to Stein von Tilburg exclusively, and Kota calls, well, they've got to sort of get other players involved in this offense. A 5-2 run here for Long Beach State. The Falco. Oh my goodness, pulls the string, delivers an ace, and an emphatic finish to that fourth set. We go to a fifth, all bets are off. A set to 15 for the Big West Conference Championship. Welcome back. There's your scenario. Hawaii taking the first two sets, but in vintage Long Beach State fashion, they do not say die. And they take sets three and four, and now they are the team with all the momentum. And you would imagine all of the confidence going into this fifth set, Ryan. Yeah, Hawaii sort of questioning themselves, I think, at times, especially in sort of their offensive output. We talked about how Sian von Tilburg's having a, a what could be a career night with 21 kills, hitting 500, yet to make an error. But really, their offense has become pretty predictable for Hawaii. Hawaii's got to be able to get their, all their attackers involved. And again, that all starts off with the pass, the service pressure that Long Beach is putting on Hawaii has sort of really limited a lot of their offensive options. And what Long Beach State has done, which we thought was virtually impossible at the start of this set, is they have quieted roughly 10,000 people here at the Stan Sheriff Center. But sensing the fifth set about to begin, the crowd takes it upon itself to turn up that knob. 
Many of them now standing on their feet, trying to provide the energy for this Hawaii team. And I think this just goes to speak to how even these two teams are and how they have really put on a show here in these last two weeks. And this is as much an urging for the home team in this fifth set as it is an appreciation for what they have seen here tonight. That has always been the case with this Hawaii crowd. They have always cheered for and shown their appreciation for good volleyball. And we have gotten terrific volleyball, the highest level of intercollegiate volleyball here in this Big West Conference Championship. You gotta imagine, these players have been playing hard for the past few hours. It is 10.30 at night, and they've got maybe about a half an hour to go, 20 minutes, to really put it all on the line here for the Big West Conference Championship. Well, you can toss out all the statistics. It's Hawaii and Long Beach going five yet again for the third straight time. And Hawaii flipping their lineup here. The first time they're actually starting in this rotation with Colton Cowell back to serve. Set outside, Ensign cross court dug up by Gage Worsley. Joe, he goes high and away to Stein. Cross court and in. Kill number 21 for Stein Bodsilver. He is trying to get this crowd amped up. Great set, 30 feet cross court by Joe Worsley. Again, Hawaii choosing to go with Colton Kawa as the first server, hoping for a different matchup at the net. Look at that stat line. Siegfried with the pass. Outside, here's Ensing. Dug up again by Gage Worsley. High ball to Von Tilbert, three blockers up. It doesn't matter. And Steinbaum to her playing to the crowd, but you've got to give credit to Gage Worsley. What a day. 11 digs for Gage Worsley. And the all important start to a fifth set. And he's gone Hawaii's way the first two points. Interesting, Long Beach State actually did this in Long Beach the second night. They flipped their line of Hawaii this time doing it. To Reninga goes backside. Here's DeFalco through the block and down. When in doubt, look for number 11. He's got 16 put downs. Double double performance for him with his 10 digs. He is just spectacular. And he serves a bullet. Middle set, Gassman. Colton Cowell with the pristine pass. And that kill by Gassman couldn't have come at a more opportune time. Hawaii needed that attack. <laughs> and Milan Zarkovic gives a big bear hug to Gage Worsley for that pass. Three serving one, and it is Gassman to serve. Molina handles the pass. They go back row. DeFalco blows it up. And we've seen DeFalco actually miss a few of those hits earlier in the match. That time, there was no missing that. No blockers at the net. They actually committed with the middle and an open net for TJ DeFalco. So now Simone Anderson to serve. Two serving three. We're in the fifth. Diving pass there by Gage. Joe goes back row to Colton through the block. Handled by Tuaninga a little awkwardly. Siegfried is blocked in roof. Worsley right next to Solbrig. And the Punahou alum deciding he wants to challenge Joe Worsley here down the line. Watch this block by Joe Worsley saying, uh-uh, not here. No soup for you. And it is Joe Worsley repositioning himself to the far side behind the service line. Four serving two. 
Molina, how good has he been? Outside, Siegfried, blocked, Henry, but a net violation. A net violation called against Hawaii. And they knew it right away. Let's see what, if we can see what happens here. Rado goes up. And there it, it looks is. like Rado just followed through yeah, back into the net. Three serving four. That was huge. Pass by Gage Worsley. Middle set. Solberg gets it down. 5-3 Hawaii. And Solberg continues his perfect night. Seven kills on eight attempts. Hitting 875. Joel Worsley deciding to run the middles here late in this fifth set. DeFalco with the pass. He gets the set in the back row, dinks it over. Hawaii in transition. Cowell! Every point so important. I mean, the crowd is cheering as if it's match point every single time Hawaii gets an opportunity to swing. And a timeout by Long Beach State. Well, what a time Colton Cowell picked to go career, Ryan. 16 kills, 11 digs, double-double performance. Really, Colton Cowell actually proving to be that X Factor here tonight. Giving the crowd something to cheer about and hoping to extend this run right now. Six serving three, Von Tilburg gets it in again. Backside, Ensign, solo stuff, Colton Cowell. It's like he heard us, Colton Cowell going on, the only local boy for Hawaii on the court right now, really claiming that local pride here, representing the 808 nicely. And that is his 10th solo stuff of the season. 6-1, Colton Cowell. Here's Insane. Dug up by Gage Worsley, but only momentarily. And we'll see here, Cowell saying that he actually touched him under the net. So saying that he interfered with me. So Charlie Wade going over to see if they saw that net. Joe Worsley, the floor captain, will also go over and chat briefly with Tony Chan. And Charlie Wade's gonna go back for a little more of an explanation or at least a conference. Well, I think right now he's just trying to figure out what rotation they're in because last time Joe Worsley actually got caught up in that auto rotation play. That was the Solbrig kill from a ways ago. And so the question is right now that if the contact was made under the net by Ensing into Cowell, that he interfered with the net because Gage originally actually played the ball up, so the play was not technically dead because he kept that in play. So Charlie's asking whether or not that should be an interference. Let's see if we can tell here. You see, he kind of, yeah, I mean, he did his job. He actually stayed on his side of the line. I think just maybe his arm may have touched Cowell's leg. So four, serving seven. Siegfried to serve. Pass by Cowell. Worsley outside the Colton block. Kept alive by Gage. The set tight to the net. Did Cowell win the battle? Yes, he did. And Cowell is jacked up right now. Joe Worsley's going to have to give some, something to Cowell after that play. That set was really tight. Not a lot of options here. Left-handed school shot off to Aninga. And they're swapping sides. Hawaii up 8-4 here in the fifth. It should be said, the Rainbow Warriors in their history as a member of the MPSF and the Big West Conference have now played in six, including tonight, conference championship matches. They are 0-5 in those championship matches. Can they break through? They have a long way to go here.
against the very stingy and proud defending national champs. Anastasiadis. Good serve. Tuaninga sets up Ensign. Three blockers up. They get the touch. Played up by Amato. Gasman is roofed. Blocked by DeFalco. How clutch is that? That was a big play there. Hawaii with an open net opportunity after a great serve by James Anastasiadis off the bench to put the pressure on them. Hawaii unable to convert. And now again, Nick Amato back to serve. A rotation Hawaii is struggling all night long, but Hawaii has flipped their lineup. So we'll see if that will help them get out of this rotation quicker. Five serving eight. Two hand pass, Gage Worsley. Middle set, Gassman. And it goes down, barely. Alan Knight asking for clarification from Jesse Martinez. So the blockers say they didn't touch it, but the linesman and, and Martinez is saying it doesn't matter because that ball was in. Let's make sure we get, let's get a good, let's get a good. Yeah. Breathing a little easier. This would have been a big miss. And Alan Knight, who still has a challenge, might be tempted to bust it out. Interesting enough, it's actually being shown here in the arena, which they normally don't allow. He was actually, if that ball would have been in, it would be interesting out. It would be interesting to see if Knight actually pulled the challenge card after you saw that. He has one remaining, but he is not going to challenge it. Nine serving five. Rado Patapuna of the server. Outside to Falco, off the block and out. Evan winds up in the seats. TJ DeFalco is something else. He's got 18 kills. His mate, Kyle Ensing, has 20. They're both hitting well above 300. On the other side, the main men have been Steinbaum Tilburg, 23 kills, hitting 523. Colton Powell, career high, 17 kills, hitting 455. Six serving nine. Outside, Cowell. Day every day, Kawa saying, just keep giving me the ball. Hawaii has actually not set Rado Parapun off once here in the fifth set. They are right now riding Kawa and Von Tilburg. Worsley recognizes those two players are hot and he's going to keep giving it to him. One timeout left for Long Beach. They're not using it here. Ten serving six. Good serve by Kawa. Overpass. Put down by Stein. And this crowd is feeling it here. Again, credit Colton Cowell. I sound like a broken record, but Colton Cowell leading his charge here for this Warriors squad. Timeout Beach, we'll be back. The look of Colton Cowell with Hawaii up five here in the fifth. Can he keep the pressure on? Took a little something off. Diving past Molina. Bump set to Falco to Insing. He gets blocked. So here's the Falco off the bump set by the triple block and down. He is unstoppable. Great broken play and a step by Sipri that time. And TJ DeFalco bails his team out and more importantly is back on the service line. Seven serving 11. Conversation between Joe Worsley and the R2, Tony Chan. What do you suspect that may have been regarding? Yeah, I'm not sure. It's hard to say, maybe a, a under the net again on, on Long Beach. Here it comes from DeFalco. Gage Worsley, climb pass, Gassman drops the hammer. 
Mike Gassman coming through clutch right now, but the other clutch player, Gage Worsney. That was an absolute bomb off the hand of TJ DeFalco and a perfect three pass by Gage Worsley. Jakob Tella in and back to serve. 12 serving seven. Siegfried dug up by Tella. Worsley, high ball to Von Tilburg. Can you believe it? With the stare down, and how about the dig by Jakob Tella coming in off the bench, an aggressive serve and a great dig, and then the finish by Stein Von Tilburg, 25 kills. That's two off his career high. Von Tilburg bringing it all evening long. Tello, a pass by Siegfried. Backside, here's Ensign. Dug up by Cowell and sent over by Palapuno. Free chance here for the beach. To Aninga, backside, Ensign. Dug up by Rado, but it goes out. Oh, oh so close by Palapuno. We are being treated to some high quality volleyball right now. Every play, players diving all over the court. Hawaii hoping to side out quickly here in the latter part of this match. This scene, this battle, the level of play here in intercollegiate volleyball, it does not get any better than this. And 13 to 8 may seem like a comfortable lead, but it is not with this Long Beach State squad. Grant Guanasso behind the service line. Worsley to Solbrig, off the block and out. And they will rise here at the SSC. No timeouts left for Long Beach. And how apropos is it that Joe Worsley, the team captain, the leader of this team, is back to serve for Hawaii. Aloha ball for a championship. served by Joe Worsley forcing the overpass here and Hawaii capturing their first conference championship at home in a sold-out stand share center and the Hawaii fans coming in mass to watch the festivities this evening soaking it in Hawaii sits atop the Big West Mountain and the view is spectacular What a match, you see Rado Parapuna. He provided that lift early on, struggled as the match wore on. But it just goes to show you how good this Hawaii team is. When a player like Rado does not get set at all in the fifth set, and Hawaii's still able to win, relying on Colton Cowell and Stein Von Tilburg. And how about the respect? Long Beach State on the Hawaii side of the net. They're not going under the net, they're on the Hawaii side. And these hugs and handshakes, they're taking a while. These two teams appreciate, I think, just what the other brings out from them. And the best thing about it, Ryan, we may see this matchup yet one more time before the season's over. And as we said earlier, this championship means so much more than just as you can see Steinbaugh Tilburg with tears in his eyes, his last home match here at the Stanshare Center. But this is a match 
that was more than just about this team. It was for every single other player that played for this program. It's for the Jennings Franciscovich. It's for the Hendrick Moe players that continue to support this team from afar. Well, let's send it over to Scott Robbs. He's with Charlie Wade. Scott. All right, Coach. What's going through your head right now? Well, uh, just how appreciative I am to what this, you know, how this team has brought this community together. You know, it's just really remarkable. You know, our guys have said, take so much pride in, in playing for the university and playing for the state. This win wasn't for our fans, even though it was. This win is because of our fans. Like just the support that we get, the mana that our guys feel off of this crowd, this energy. I mean, thanks to Spectrum, you guys, all you do to help bring everyone in the state together to share with this just remarkable journey and this unbelievable team. I just couldn't be more humbled, more appreciative that to be a part of something, to bring the community together like this is, is really unbelievable. When they won set number four, were you thinking, oh my goodness, here we go again. No, I, well, it's got to go five, doesn't it? I guess. This is the fifth one in a row. It's going to go five. So, yeah, that's just, you know, it's, it's all a part of the journey, man. Are you guys the number one seed? I don't know. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? We're in. We said all year long, the only way we're getting in the NCAA tournament is there's a match being played in the Stan Sheriff Center. We got to be in it, and we got to win it. And our guys came through. You sound like a wrestler in the WWE. Congratulations, Charlie. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> All right, guys, back over to you. A splendid evening of volleyball here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Hawaii comes out on top in five. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Stein von Tilburg was remarkable. 25 kills, 543, zero hitting errors on 46 attempts. And on the other side for Long Beach, TJ DeFalco, 19 kills. Remember his slow start? He hit 405 in a double-double performance with 10 digs. The fans recognizing Long Beach State, but on this particular night, it is Hawaii with the champions' shirts. How sweet it is. Hawaii is the champions, and it ain't over yet. That's right. An epic night. A night that people will remember for a long time as the Rainbow Warriors take down Long Beach State. A win, an evening for the ages in Manoa. And how sweet it is for these Rainbow Warriors. Don't forget about the Heineken Post Game Show. They'll break down what we have just witnessed. But for now, aloha from the Stan Sheriff Center. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Heineken Post Game Show. Let the celebration begin. Let's throw it over now to the public address announcer, Ben Kiaaina, for the festivities. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. Please, time now to begin the 2019 Big West Men's Volleyball Tournament Champions Awards Ceremony. Presenting tonight's awards, representing the University of Hawaii, Please welcome President David Lasner, Athletic Director David Matlin, Associate Athletics Director Lois Mannon, and Tournament Director Rich Sheriff. Right now, we'd like to start by honoring the 2019 Men's Volleyball Tournament Champions with the presentation of the championship medallions. As your name is called, please come forward to accept your award. Team captain number one, Joe Worsley. Number two, James Anastasiades. Number three, Brett Rosenmeyer. Number four, Stein von Tilburg. Number six, Cage Worsley. Number ten, Jakob Della. Number eleven, Dalton Solbrand. Oh 
Number 12, Brett Sheward. Number 13, Max Rosenfeld. Number 15, Patrick Gassman. Number 16, Philippe Humler. Number 17, Colton Cowell. Number 19, Rado Parapunov. And number 20, Jackson Van Eckeren. <laughs> Student assistant, Matt Larson. Volunteer <laughs> assistant, Chad Giesman. Assistant coach, Joshua Walker. Associate coach, Milan Zarkovic. Head coach for your Big West champion, Rainbow Warriors, Charlie Wade. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to present the 2019 Big West Men's Volleyball Tournament Most Valuable Player with their award. From the University of Hawaii, number four, Stein Von Tilbur. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time for the presentation of the 2019 Big West Men's Volleyball Tournament Championship Trophy. Coach Charlie Wade, please come forward to accept the award. Congratulations to the University of Hawaii, the 2019 Big West Men's Volleyball Tournament Champions. Let's go. Well, guys, that was pretty special tonight. After last weekend, you were there, Chris. Back to back five set matches. As Charlie said, this one had to go five, but this time. Hawaii came out in front. And the biggest difference from last weekend, Scott, I think, was Hawaii blocked much better tonight. And the second thing was they got a great match out of Colton Cowell. He was a little bit missing last week, but tonight he was all there, as was Stein Van Tilburg. 25 kills, no errors. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I know. Where'd that come from? Amazing. Yeah, you said in the uh, game on, Lisa, that he was the guy who you thought would have to be the peak performer. Well, I think that Stein definitely... We ain't done yet! We'll see you guys next week. Come on. We'll take a break. Come back and have more from a very festive Stan Sheriff Center where the Rainbow Warriors are the champs. Welcome back to the Heineken Post Game Show. Well, you see a lot of the fans still kind of mingling around after you see Hawaii right there put their name at the top as the Big West Conference champions after a very hard-fought but well-deserved five-set victory over the 49ers of Long Beach State. And there you see the players very excited with the medals around their neck, their championship T-shirts. And, man, oh, man, there, there were so many different emotions, I think, that ran through everybody in this arena throughout this match, which lasted nearly three hours. Well, definitely, you know, Kuno Leahy said it was amazing how the crowd became the seventh man, and truly they were tonight. I mean, and that's exactly, again, I'll reiterate, 
This team has worked so hard and they have just tried to encourage the community to come out and support them. Come watch us, come support us. And they allowed this arena to be a sold out and then take a five set thriller, thriller, awesome match. There are many empty seats tonight and you know what? Nobody left early. <laughs> They're still here. <laughs> you know, it was an interesting match because Hawaii came out like gangbusters in that first set and really took it right to Long Beach State. 25-15, but then after that, except for the fifth set, it was as even as you would expect between the two top teams in the country. Well, we knew it was gonna be a battle from the get-go, and just like Coach Charlie Wade said, five, is that a surprise? Probably not, and will we see these teams again? Probably so, but you know what? This is huge because it solidifies their NCAA bid. Nobody can tell them they're not going anywhere. They're going to the big dance. Yeah, they did take the decision out of the committee's hands, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. This is a little fight. Yeah, they don't have to wake up at 7 a.m. They know they're in. We'll just have to find out if they're the one or the two seed. Chris, you brought up a good point. The blocking and how much differently the blocking was a factor tonight as opposed to last week where Long Beach State out blocked them tonight. Hawaii, 11-7 advantage. Yeah, that made a big, big difference. And that, like I said, Colton Cowell, he made a big difference. Stein having a flawless night. Uh, 25 kills, no errors. That was huge. And, uh, and then the crowd was just such a factor. That every time the guys kind of got maybe down a little bit, the crowd would bring my right back. And we got Colton Cowell here right now. How about that? Hey, I, I grabbed Colton from the line where he was going to get his lay from the antis. Colton, heck of a weekend, heck of a match. Tell us what it feels like and what, what you're thinking. This is the most incredible feeling in the world. I get to play in front of the people I love with the people I love. And how about your performance? I mean, you were on fire last night. It carried over to tonight. You look at some of the highlights. Uh, you were going up and above the block countless times. My team puts me in positions to be successful. That's the only thing I can say is my team is the reason that I am successful. I gotta wonder, what were you guys thinking when it went to a fifth set? Because you did it twice last week also. We knew that we went to a fifth set. We were fully aware that we, had, we were 0-2 in that, in that uh, under those circumstances. And so we told ourselves, that every point needed to be played championship point mentality. We needed to come out with fire. We needed to have fun. We needed to put a smile back on our face and bring back that aloha spirit. Congratulations, brother. So much, hey, guys. I got Thank a quick you. question for Kyle. Yeah. Hey, Kyle, fifth set. Uh -huh. Normally, Joe serves first. Yeah. Charlie threw it on you tonight. How was that? That was uh, a little <laughs> nerve wracking at first, but he told me to just embrace this moment, take a minute to look up into the crowd and soak it in, and then go after it. So it was, it was it a worked. great opportunity, and it did work. And yes. you got different, you got different matchups too. I think that threw Long Beach off a little bit, don't you think? I hope so. Yeah, I think I think it did in the end, and we were able to play uh, incredible team defense with a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and and we we love the position we're in now, and we're we're very happy That's to move forward. Congratulations. If you want to grab some of your other teammates, bring them on over. We'd love to talk to them as well. As Colton Cowell, congratulations. Awesome. Absolutely tremendous job, effort kiddo. by Colton Cowell tonight who put down, uh, I don't have my glasses on, but I think that's 18 kills. 18 kills. Yeah, hit 471. And it's just, it's so much fun, isn't it? Oh my gosh. You know what? This... Absolutely. All right, the celebration continues. Hawaii wins in five. We'll be back with more here from the Stan Sheriff Center. I like Hawaii Long Beach State. We start off with Cole Cowell, the left side hitter, was tremendous all evening long. He put on 18 big kills, hit 471 on the night. He even included a couple of blocks, three to be exact. On the other side of the net, you have the Big West Conference Player of the Year and Kyle Ensing. He led the way for the beach with 21 kills, hit 311 on the night. He also included three service aces. And TJ DeFalco, he is just incredible. 19 kills for the three-time All-American, hit a robust 405 on the night. He also had three service aces, but the man of the night for the University of Hawaii, right there, the man out of the Netherlands, Stein von Tilburg, get this. 25 kills without an error, hit 543 on the night as Hawaii wins in five the Big West Conference Tournament Championship. Welcome back to the Heineken Post Game Show. All right, we stole Joe Worsley away. He's supposed to be over at the Big West Conference media room right now, but he, he was nice enough to come over because we try to be nice to him during the season. My last game, I yeah, had to. My last game here. Joe. <laughs> 
you guys talked all season long about the way it ended a year ago and not yeah. to leave it in the hands of anybody else. You guys did that tonight. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, coming into the year, we had, it was all a process. We talked about that. It wasn't just like, this is our goal. We got to have a process of how we're going to go and, about and do it. And obviously, we had some boxes we checked off throughout the season. And then this is a huge one. Obviously, to get into the tournament, we know how last year ended. And obviously, they can't keep us out now. <laughs> There's no <laughs> leaving up the chance now. Um, so proud of the guys and our team and, these, and this crowd and everything. Um, but yeah, this is a huge uh, checklist or uh, box off our checklist. But there's even a bigger one we know ahead for us. So as you look ahead, I mean, it's, you, you can't even grasp, nobody can grasp what you're going through right now. But if you could describe it very shortly, the feeling that you have when that last ball dropped. Yeah, I was ecstatic. <laughs> I was hoping Dalton would put that thing three foot line. Really, <laughs> but no, I mean, I was just so happy for all the guys here. You could just see how happy everybody was. Stein is in tears. Um, the coaching staff was ecstatic. We worked so hard uh, for this part of the season. I mean, ultimately, you know, it's two different parts of the season we kind of ended last week obviously we didn't finish how we wanted to and so we had to come and reset so we're uh we're yeah we're extremely excited and we know we got to reset though and get back to work here this week and there it is the last point that helps way win the big west conference uh, championship so what are you gonna work on now joe <laughs> my serving. My, ser yeah, my serving six, was horrible tonight. Six, six errors Everybody, tonight. I know. You, you actually jumped for it. I haven't seen you that all year. Record. And I missed. I missed. <laughs> I was trying to put it in, and I still missed. The, uh, no, yeah, I mean. Blocking got better this week, right? Yeah, no, we, that's all we worked on is being aggressive blocking. Rado is making some incredible plays for us. You know, and I, I can go on and on about all these guys, but they all stepped up big time when we needed them most. And that's what I always tell the guys. In the biggest moments, uh, give us your very best. And that's what I tell them. Joe, I got to ask you because you're going to return next week to the place you were at last week. How much of an advantage do you think it is, or how much does it help having already played in the pyramid a yeah. couple of matches just two weeks a week I, ago? Yeah, I always said our senior class has played in. Uh, that's the, uh, for uh, in terms of away games, we've played the most amount of games in that in that building, and we know it's going to be. Uh, we're going to get a lot of Hawaii support out there, but it's their home crowd, their home floor, and uh, we're going to have to prepare for a really tough match. Obviously, the past three games with them have been really tough, so we're going to have to go see what we can do to make adjustments. And uh, But we have there's going to be steps before that. I guarantee you that. <laughs> it's not going to be a, yeah automatic match with Long Beach. Everybody there has earned their right to be there, and we know that we got to... Uh, fight to you to get where to where we want to be but you're comfortable i would I, for I, sure I guess, yeah yeah no I, I would say we're pretty comfortable absolutely all righty well joe go enjoy the rest of the thank night. you everybody it's teammates. been an incredible four years i love you all i love you mom uh thank you for everybody for watching spectrum sports scott lisa chris you guys are awesome i love you guys thank you all right joe congratulations joe worsley a champion as are these other teams that today qualified for the NCAA tournament. Actually, Barton did it two days ago on Thursday. And then earlier today, Princeton wins, Lewis does, Pepperdine as well, and of course, the University of Hawaii. So there are two at-large teams that will be selected tomorrow morning. Don't forget, 7 a.m. NCAA.com is the selection show. We know one of them is going to be Long Beach State. The question remains, who will the other be? Will it be UC Irvine? Will it be UC Santa Barbara? Or will it be USC? At least we don't have to say, will it be Hawaii, somebody, somebody. We know Hawaii's in. That's the best news yet. I, I think it's going to be SC, just uh, out of conjecture. We talked about this earlier. Um, I'm not going to get up at 7 a.m. for that, though, Me I don't either. think. But I'm sure you will be, though, Scott. I might be going to sleep about 7 a.m. after tonight. <laughs> All righty, guys. Night. Hawaii, where do, they, where do you think they get seated? That's a good question. You know, Long Beach beat them twice, so the head ahead is uh, Long Beach is up 2-1. Mm -hmm. They could give Long Beach the number one seed in the, in the tournament. I don't know if they'll do that, though, because this is a pretty pretty decisive uh, victory in, in winning a, you know, a conference matchup as opposed to, you know, the regular season matchup. And they get a week off before they have to begin the NCAA tournament. That, that should help as well. Which I think is, is good for the team. They've just played a pretty, almost a three-hour match, very intense high level per charlie wade volleyball definitely high level the highest i've seen in a long long time but i think you have to just remember first or second seed it really doesn't matter because they are on route to exactly where they want to be and they understand that one of my final things i'd like to say is the real hero tonight the crowd yeah unbelievable chicken skin yeah, yeah. i mean all night long it was like that hey how about that hawaii they finally do it they win the big west conference tournament you guys Happy Easter.
Same to you, Scott. To all of you and to everybody watching as well. And special thanks, as always, to our outstanding Spectrum Sports crew. For Colton, for Joe, for Chris, for Lisa, I'm Scott. Until next time, we'll be Joe Loha. And a good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Montana. <laughs>